Jim Flynn, Annapolis Center, do you have any test operations in restricted area 2508? Area 31, Roger. Traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some non-ballistic motion, over. Roger, Area 31. Continue to send it to your discretion, over. Okay, Center. The traffic is approaching head-on, all to right, and really moving. They're right by us, right now. There are a thousand UFO sightings reported around the world every month. 90% of these sightings can be explained, but 10% cannot. Officially and unofficially, the U.S. military has been investigating UFOs since 1947. Their top secret goal is to find out what's behind these unexplained sightings. The Pentagon classifies them as unusual airborne anomalies, but a better term is X-Files. Join us now as Mac, Wan Wan, and Commander Cobra explore these unsolved cases, UFO incidents that baffle even the U.S. military. This is Mac Maloney's Military X-Files. And now, here's Mac Maloney. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Well, what show we have for you tonight? In fact, we've uh, termed it Weird Palooza, okay? Weird Palooza. But first, let's get to the important part. Let's introduce the members of the posse, or the Pousse, as the kids say on the streets of Paris. Girls, get ready. Sit down, please. And uh, get your mister, and get your fans, however they're powered. The big box of Kleenex, and i got to say tonight, the extra big box of wipes, because the very famous Juan Juan is here. Hello, Mac. Hello, girls. Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's going to be a weird palooza, that's for sure. I like the way it's kicking off right now, but I'm really glad do. to be here. And okay. Matter of fact, I'm glad to be anywhere at this point. Right. Good to see you. Hey, fifth try. Is the challenge, right? Fun, I can t- okay, hey, listen, uh, so what's going on with you there, uh, Juani? You look very stylish tonight. Well, once- in, uh, in- Thank you. Uh, it's in my look. Uh, Rolling Stones in the background. and Oh, uh, I really enjoyed the game Sunday. It was awesome. Okay, we're a timeless show, so we'll talk and- about some ping pong game, apparently. Okay, yeah, it was mm-hmm. uh, you know, mm-hmm. okay. backgammon. It was right. a great game. Yeah, it was a great game. It's chilling. Yep. So anyway, so listen, Enjoying girls. I mean Oh, yeah, the snow. Okay. Um, and everything's okay with you, mm-hmm. right? Yes? Yeah, real good. Okay, good. Good to know. Staying healthy. Staying healthy? Wait a minute. Fit, <laughs> fit is a fiddle. Who are you and what have you done with Juan Juan? <laughs> All right, let's, girls, now we have... He's watching reruns of Downton Abbey. <laughs> That's exactly. it. Uh, they'll do it. Uh, yeah. All right. We have some bad news for the uh, middle-aged women in our audience. You know how many of they are. No Coco tonight. We're Coco free tonight. Sorry, ladies. He's on a secret mission, but he'll be back soon. He appeals to the younger uh, generation, too, doesn't he? No, not really. <laughs> I think uh, he, he, he crosses all those boundaries. Uh, if you want to read the numbers. He crosses the line. He crosses right, well, the he line does cross the line. times. Okay. <laughs> Up there in the bowl of flags. I envy that guy. The land of donuts. Um, our national correspondent <laughs> Battle, from Battle Creek, Michigan. Switchblade Steve Ward, Switchy. Switchy, how are you? Great to be here tonight. How's things going up at Battle Creek? Uh, beyond wonderful. Mm. Beyond wonderful. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's utopia in this, right there. In this, it is a bit frigid up here, of, uh, The Frosted Flakes bit, Factory. <laughs> bit frigid? Is that what uh, you said? They probably have to thaw the flakes out, actually. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the snap, crackle, pop is a little slow. You know, it's kind of like a mm. slowed down tape recorder. Huh, wow. Mm. Okay. I'm impressed he, he was able to use the word flakes and uh, frigid in the same sentence. Whoa. Yeah. Thank you, Switchy. And uh, really, we confirmed that you... I'm a pretty impressive right. guy. You combed your hair, right? That's why you look a little different. Yeah, it actually has a part in it. Yeah, okay. All right. Because you, you were a little furor like last week. Do you remember that? Oh, they, oh wow. We slicked it back, Juan Juan. Yeah, I remember. He put slick on it, right? Didn't he? Yeah. Put some broken no, on that. No, no, it's just no. The, that's natural. Uh, do you, well, do you water, paste? You know? Do you paste you that to your scalp? Uh, well, I was going to say, uh, is our relative. that head dress you got on there? Is that pasted to your scalp? Oh, An expensive oh, wig, man. Meow. Oh. Hang on. Let's see. That's our security chief. Well, Lily I could Club. notice the path is on a different side this week, so I knew oh. something was on there. <laughs> he had it in the middle last time. That's uh, Willie Club. Willie joining us in beautiful oh, Methuen, Massachusetts. Willie, how you doing? Security. Great, chief. Mac. Yep. How you doing? How how you doing, gang? I'm, We're doing great. Club. You know, Good looking to see at you. the program tonight, I gotta say, you know, it's uh, 
<laughs> it's going to be really informative. It, okay. The things on there, I just, I'm pretty excited about. This is a type of program you may have to take notes. I don't know. That, uh, I'm ready. Yeah. It's gonna We're going to be talking about weird stuff and uh, with an emphasis on reincarnation because uh, come upon come upon some very unusual reincarnation stories. Not like not like all of them are unusual, but these are very unusually unusual. So look at Willie, you are all dressed up. You are uh, the whitey bulger of the show, man out there. Those you get you just he just looks so dignified that I, it, it's kind of. Jarring. Well, I like to wear my Sunday best on the show. It, mm-hmm. it really helps me perform better, you know. Really? Okay. He, you know, he looks awesome because when we go when we go live on TV one of these days, yes. he's going to really yeah. And be the guy that's going right. to shape us yeah, all. Yeah, that'll up. break the camera. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I'll wear the one of those little bags in my head. Then if, the eyes cut out. If it's anywhere in the Winglands, no one's going to give us any trouble. If you know what I mean. Look, we got one more. Uh, this is this is the definitely Beauty and the Beast tonight's show, okay? Because the very lovely Raven is joining us from Upstate New York. Raven, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you? You've been sitting, Hi, Raven. Been sitting there Hi. for like five Welcome minutes watching this. Right? Thank you for having me back. Oh, yeah. Our pleasure. Okay. What does that say on your hat there? Something tree or something? Beer tree. Beer tree. Local, local, local brewery. Oh, oh wow. Awesome. Where's that? Where is it? Um, yeah, up here. So up there. if you're ever here, check them out. All They're right. great. Fear tree. Do you have Utica Club up there where you, uh, uh, where you live? Comes out of the faucets. Yep. Yep. Oh, I was I was up at, uh, at a fort up there uh, named after a drum, and I uh, used to love Utica Club and Genesee. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's all we could get. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I love Jenny. Jenny, I love Jenny. Yep, Jenny. Yep. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I was 12 years yep. up in upstate New York, and there's a little corner store right on the right in the middle of this neighborhood, and all they sold was Jenny beer. And I, I, a lot of Jenny cream ale, man, I just got hooked on. A lot of people just – some people don't like it, but I got a taste for it anyway. You're talking about Genesee? Yeah, Jenny, yeah. Yeah, Genesee. Yeah. I feel like it's definitely either you love it or oh, you, you absolutely hate it. Oh, you hate it. it. Yep. yep. Yeah, they had – you could buy it down here too. I remember drinking a lot of that. And, it was, and Jenny yeah. Ice was the first you really kind of – Utica Club, that – that was it. Uh, I don't know. We should have a beer off sometime. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's a different show. Oh, that's so, a good idea. so listen. Here's a couple of things. And Narragansett then be... versus Genesee. Uh, yeah, get a Narragansett. Where are you going to find that? They I don't make they, that beer anymore, do they? I thought you could get it again now. Well, maybe. A, uh, like PB, yeah, I, I wish they had beer trees. All together is made. It'd be cool if beer grew on trees. Anyway, we should have your father on uh, Raven uh, as a beer expert. Okay, because he gives we me should. lectures yeah. on beer that, you know, people splitting the atoms should have so many details. All right, so listen, here's... Uh, yeah, he, uh, he's something else. Yeah. So, um, well, he's been on the show, you know, Raven. Do you know that? He's been on the show. He told that story about how the guy pulled up to him at the red light and said, I, I have my eye on you, and then took off. Do you ever tell you that story? Yeah. Tell me that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'll be texting him after this. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't usually say these things, but Juan and I were talking about this off here. If you have a chance, go to YouTube and search for the Peanuts cartoon characters do Pink Floyd's Uncomfortably Numb. Is that the name of the song, JJ? Yeah. That's it, right? right? Comfortably Numb. Comfortably, Comfortably Numb. numb. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It came out as a link in uh, Rock Classic Band's email, daily email. And I clicked on it. It's just funny because it's not it, – it, because someone edited a lot of Peanuts together, and that's kind of a dark song. It's actually about Sid Barrett, their kind of schizo guitar player. And, and, and it, it takes all these kind of dark moments of the Peanuts – you know, cartoons and puts them together in this kind of, you know, kind of weird way. But then there's a lot of Peanuts cartoons where they're actually playing instruments. You know, the dog is playing the bass and stuff, so they put those in, and it's yeah, just really well done. on the piano. Someone had six months to kill, and, you know, hopefully they got a good lawyer or something. But it's really, really good. The Peanuts gang does Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd. I mean, I don't really go for about 90% of that stuff, but it was really good. Um <clears throat> With the vocals, the the, the mouth movements, yes. and the whole deal. It's That's like, what it, Yeah, they added it back. Those, yeah, man, oh man. Um, so anyway, the other thing too I want to mention is that we did a um, music show a couple weeks ago. Got a lot of good feedback. We had some. It was put together at the last minute, but we had some musicians on. We were 
telling musician jokes and stuff like that. And a lot of people um, uh, liked it and gave us some good feedback, so thank you. We'll be doing another one soon in the future, I hope. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. I think that's it. So you know what we'll do? Let's start the Weirdapalooza. It took me a long time to figure out how to spell that correctly. But, um, yeah, just take weirdo and put palooza on the end of it, right? Weirdapalooza. Correct, JJ? That's it. Okay. That's it. Yep. Now, I know two big fans of reincarnation. Um, I have a weird story. It doesn't have to do with reincarnation, but it's along that kind of lines of just odd things happening to you in life. But but I love reincarnation stories. I love military reincarnation stories. But what I also really like are stories that people have their own personal reincarnation stories. I don't have any. I don't feel like... Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I've, because my father grew up in the town I now live in, and there are places, bar rooms, that we all know the names of, that I feel sometimes I'm in there, and I get a feeling that, like, my father was in there many, many years ago, even though Mm. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. But certain parts of that town, I definitely do feel something like, like my father was there at one point, you know? But he probably was. I think the question is, can the... Can the memories of your dad or the stories that your dad may have told you about his favorite bar room in Dorchester might have uh, uh, been implanted in your brain so tightly that it became your memory? Is it part of your DNA? Is it part of the DNA passed on? Yeah, it, it, maybe it can be. Yeah. So Anyway, so listen, Raven, it you told passed me. Down, but maybe we'll find out by some of our stories. Right. I don't know if there, yeah, I don't know if there were bars there then. <laughs> where they are now, but they could be fishing houses or ice houses, or, you know, jobs he had as a kid or something. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Right. There was a big rum That's factory. Kind of what I there. the location of it. So, anyway. Very strange. Anyway, so, um, but personal reincarnation stories, things that have happened to people, I have these kind of past memories. I don't have it, but I know Raven has a good story. So, Raven, our um, <clears throat> resident, I want to say, um, uh, I can't remember. Oh, I know. Our resident Win- Winona Ryder lookalike. <laughs> we can cut that out. Okay. So, I love it. Oh, so you I had a um, you, way you, prettier than me. You have a uh, <laughs> well, let's, um, let's, let's have a let's have a pretty eye. No, she does. <laughs> let's have a contest. Um, <laughs> so you had your um, but you have this kind of reoccurring kind of reincarnation dream, or uh, just tell us about it a little bit. Yeah. Um. Uh, to me, I mean, I've been having a dream for. I really feel like it started when I was about three. So this has been a long time Mm -hmm. and it's always the same exact dream. It's super short and it's, it's vivid, but it's also like very vague at the same time. Like it's very intense when Mm -hmm. it's happening and I see my face crystal clear. I don't look this way. I'm actually a man and I'm older. I have, um, a hat on, um, it's like a baseball style cap, but like, uh, like before the baseball caps were a thing, okay. it was like more squared off, if that makes any sense. Okay. And I'm running and then I end at this tree and then I die. Mm. And I have had this dream for 27 years now. And I, to me, it's like, I've never looked further into it because it's, I feel like if I was to have any more information, I would have had it at this point. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I I definitely feel like there's something there, but I'm also not the type of person that's like, oh, I, I have to know what this is. Like, I just feel like it's something that I did live through for a time in the past, obviously, wow. until I passed away at this tree. And okay. and then that was it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's super it's odd and it's. I think about it a lot because I, I have a, a dream probably two times a month, I would say. Real, I was going to ask you how many it's times. It's unexplained. And that's frequent. Yeah, that's two yeah, times a month. That's pretty frequent. It's very frequent. And yep. And it's it's so it's bizarre because it's like you it's it's so vivid. But at the same time, it's it's just things get blurry towards like when it's starting to like end and. Mm-hmm. I can definitely tell I'm wearing like some type of a uniform. And like I said, I can picture my face absolutely clearly. Wow. And like nothing else. And how long so does it's, it, it's very bizarre. How long does the dream take, would you say? I mean, I know it's hard to say, you know, they say dreams, you know, take like two or three seconds and they seem to take like an hour. But can you tell? Yeah. To me, it's like two minutes tops. 
tux. Wow, really? Yeah. In in Dreamland, who knows? That right. could be five hours. Sure. But yeah. Yeah. to me, it's it seems like it's a very quick like it starts and then it's over with, wow. and then I wake up. You wake and, up. Yep. And I I get no other details. There's no new information. It's always the same. Is that a nightmare? So or you just wake up. Always led me to believe that. It, 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 let me just Do you have ask any one sense question. Of all, at all as to when. It, See, that's the thing because I I can't get a sense of my surroundings. All I know is I come to a tree. Yep. And and that's where I die. Okay. But I can't figure out. I can't even tell what color my clothes are because everything is it's it's dreary. Mm-hmm. It's real dreary. So it's like. It almost looks like black and white. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's just very, very dull looking. Yeah. Um, sure. So I, I've, I've never, like I said, I, there, I get, I don't get any new details. So it's super hard to tell like where I am. But I, judging by the clothes I'm wearing, just the style of them, mm-hmm. it, it has to be some, some type of a, a war. Yeah, Death. like a square, a squared off baseball cap could be kind of like you know the hats that soldiers like a cadet, wore, like a cadet yeah. hat. Yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. yeah, like a cadet. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, yeah, mm. yeah like a train conductor's hat. Yep. But like, oh, yeah, I'm right. like running. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah, thing. yeah. It, it, are people chasing you? Do you ever see any other people? I never see any other people. Hmm. It's just me. And I, I, and the weird thing is, like, I don't have a gun. I don't have mm-hmm. like a. I know this is weird. I don't have like a sword or a knife. Right. Nothing. Hand and grenade. I'm not like, as far as I know, I'm not injured because I can't feel it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Wow. And when you wake up, is it like a nightmare? Or you just wake up and you go, "Well, that was that dream again." Go back to sleep. Oh yeah, it's it's not a nightmare at all. Mm-hmm. It's it's serene almost. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's huh. just okay. Yeah. Like. Here, here it is again. Happen again. I don't know what it means, but uh-huh. okay, happened again. Wow, what a strange so story. Any idea how many times did this this dream twice a month occurred to you? It, it was definitely more frequent when I was a kid, um, and I, I would say when I was a kid growing up, I probably had it a couple times a week. I would say wow. now as an adult, it's a couple times a month. So mm-hmm. wow, that's a lot. I'm bad at math, so I'm not sure what that would be, but. Um, Somebody will figure it out, right? As an adult, she had an eighteen-year-old uh, kid. Dream analysis done. Yeah, have you ever talked to like on that on that route? I've always wanted to, but I, I've never really felt a need to do it mm-hmm. because to me, it's like I, yes. I'm the type of person that like I don't want to pry. I don't want to disrupt the natural yes. order of anything. Yes, yes, yes. So it's like the universe is giving me exactly what the universe wants me to know right now <laughs> right maybe it you know in 20 years it'll be different if you go messing around I, i've never thought about it with the universe exactly i <laughs> don't i don't want to like you know tamper Up, with anything upset the balance <laughs> yeah okay what the what 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 um astrological sign are you raven just for, not that i believe in this stuff but i'm just I'm curious a Pisces. oh what's that mean i'm a pisces oh that means a troublemaker why can't you be um yeah. an aquarius that means there's something fishy. There, yes, there you go. There's something fishy. Yeah, there's something fishy you can want to open. <laughs> okay, so let's turn this over, this story over to our reincarnation scholar, I should say. I say that only because there's a bunch of books behind him. So that's quite a story there, Clubby, right? Yeah, it, it really is. You know, uh, I'd recommend uh, to you that you um, go to regression therapy. Let's go. We'll no, pay for it. I know you the show will pay for it. You don't want to bring that up. But, you know, the regression therapy will let you, you know, they'll go back in time and, and see if that is something that's uh, real, you know, that has some substance behind it. There's a, you know, there's a, a large school of thought that, you know, regression therapy, really all they're doing is hypnotizing you and putting, you know, thoughts uh, in, yeah. in your mind. But, uh, there's a lot of good things to say about it. A lot of people have been able to uh, mm-hmm. go back in time, you might say. So you might want to think about that. Would uh, you do that? You know, just to would you find do it? Out. You might get a little more background on that. Raven, yeah, would you? No, would you that's definitely something worth thinking of. Would you find a dream interpreter in Craigslist or something like that for seventy-five bucks? Go and see them. <laughs> the show will pay for it. Please lay down in this car. Seventy-five. That's too much. Seventy-five. I would haggle with them. I'd bring that down to twenty-five. <laughs> you got a tip? Maybe there's a lesson that she has to learn, and she hasn't learned it yet. And that's why the the, the dream is uh, 
repeating itself. You're running though. I do. Well, it, she doesn't currently walk into trees now. Yeah, but, right. But Stay away from trees. But she's not. Is it the beer <laughs> tree? Look at my Instagram. Tree. <laughs> okay. She's not running into Uh-oh. the tree and then dying. Yeah. Wow. I okay. love trees. Of, yeah. Yeah, right. I, I love hugging trees. There really? Yeah. Okay. All right. So it must be something to do with that. Maybe it's a pretending a a, a, a new career move, and you're not really coming to grips with. Maybe it. gonna be a lumberjack. Oh, the tree now, she, she puts on women's what? clothing. Uh-oh. I don't know if she hangs around in bars or not. But. Man. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking guy, about? The guy in the dream is kind of strange. <laughs> that, is, that is a little odd, yeah. Being a guy in the dream is kind of Maybe it's not odd. Every, I don't know. No, it's I've not odd at all. Oh, it isn't? It's yeah. odd. No, you can, no, it's not you can odd. come back as a different sex. Uh oh. Um, you, you can't come back as a plant. Or uh, you normally they don't expect you can come back as an animal. Okay. What about a marsupial? But, but you can come back Kangaroo. as a, uh, you know, an, as another sex. You, uh, it's, at least from, you know, a lot of the research that's been done. Absolutely. Okay. I, I'm just going to say for myself, I would not be a good woman. I would not be, I would not make a good female, frankly. One, one. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Club. I appreciate that. One, one would. I'm going to say one, one. I would. He would make would. a really good woman, I would think. Switchy. Switchy. I've had people tell me I that I think there's too that they think there's too much estrogen in my body. Real, that's some watching Downtown <laughs> Abbey and else. eating that's all that tofu. Problem. Yeah, that's another yeah, show. Just, you can get rid of that with penicillin. They yeah. call penicillin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And I recommend that underwear you're wearing that you might want to yeah, yeah, loosen change. them up. That could be too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it depends. I got a, oh, a six pack oh, of oh, oh, uh, Wow. Sorry. At Victoria's Secret. I, I'm just close to wearing depends, so I can I can make those. Oh come on! Now I got to cut that out. But, All right, listen. but you know, I, I got to say, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of people don't take uh, reincarnation seriously. I mean, mm-hmm. you look at statistics in the United States. I think it's three percent of Americans uh, believe in reincarnation, mm. but amazingly, ten percent of Americans have had some kind of reincarnation memory. Wow. Um, as you as you folks know from the, we did a segment on reincarnation a few months back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's something that I've had a, a real interest in for since I was a youngster. You know, I haven't had a dream like you have, Raven, but I have a real personal interest because a, a youngster that I grew up with, his brother, yes, had an experience, and I'll tell you, at a young age, tell it, tell uh, it it's story. Something that I witnessed, and uh, I'll never forget it. Tell- and uh, so, I'm I'm one of the three percent because of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I like to read and, and study a lot about reincarnation. Club. Tell the story. I mean, there's, Tell there's the story. a lot that's, that's come on. You know? Tell the story, Club. Tell the story. All right. Well, I, I'll, I'll, go through, I'll go through it quickly. Okay. But Just so when I was know. a youngster, I grew up in a neighborhood, uh, very close, uh, in a city neighborhood. And, and one of uh, my best friends had a younger brother. He was about four years old. And uh, one day after school, we were in my house. It was probably a rainy day because normally we're always outside. And we were watching my television. And at that time, we were one of the few neighborhoods, few houses that had color TV or whatever. But Color, nice. And I remember watching, um, we were watching a war movie. War movies were big at that time. Yep, yep. Because, um, you know, it had been not that long after a war and, you know, John Wayne and all those things were big yeah. deals. So they were, they always seemed to be a war movie on after, in the afternoon, the movie the, of the day. The four o'clock Anyways, movies. we were there that day, and, and it was around that time, you know, after school. So we were there that day with uh, my friend and me, and he was babysitting his brother that day. He was four-year-old because he never hung around with us. So we had him upstairs with us, and we were gabbing and screwing around and stuff. And all of a sudden, watching this war movie, he, the, his brother went uh, really ballistic. He started yelling and screaming, looking at the screen. Um, at the time, a soldier was, who was shot. It was a, he's a, you know, a fatality. He was being shot by the Japanese. I mean, and he all of a sudden started yelling, no, no, that's me. And he was pointing to his arm and uh, saying, I died, I died. And, uh, and, hmm. and he was just saying a lot of weird things. He was even disputing the kind of rifle or the gun. Is, and, and anyways, he, he pointed to a, a part in his body. It was in his arm where he, uh, uh, had, a, he had a birthmark. It was in his neck. And uh, he said he got, that's where he died. 
He mm. said, I got shot. That's where I died. Now, he's a kid, four or five years old. Wow, man, that's and, creepy, um, creepy. So we laughed it off, but he, he was so screwed up over it. Mm. And we're home alone in my house. We got nervous. So we shut the TV off. I ran in the kitchen. We got um, some Twinkies and double dogs or something. And a few beers. Sat Go ahead. And calmed him down. Yes. Maybe a few beers, too, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you know, that, that ended. Never thought much of it. Mm. And a couple of days later, he was outside. And, you know, like you do when you're a young kid, you, you tease people. So I, I saw him, and I teased him about it. I said, hey, I'm going to get shot. And I was pointing at like I had a gun shooting at him. And he ran back in the house. He went nuts again, mm. screaming. Mm -mm. And his mother came out. And I remember she yelled at us, and she said, don't you ever uh, talk to Bobby like that again and discuss that. And we never did. Yeah, sure. But yeah. it's funny, uh, you know, I hadn't seen them for years. I, 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 we kept in touch once in a while, my friend. And I remember asking him a while after that, how did Bobby do? Is, is, is he all right? You know, and uh, he said, you know what? You know, we used to sleep together in the same room because we lived in apartments, you mm -hmm. know. And he said, so he and I slept in the same room. And he said, the, for the longest time, he had used to wake up middle of the night screaming oh, about a battle and about being shot. And he shot in the arm and all this stuff in the shoulder. And um, it got so bad, the parents had to move him out of the room and leave the, his brother there alone. Wow. -y. Eventually, he got over it. And I asked his brother and he said, oh, yeah. He said he, he, he eventually got over it. He said, and he's normal today. Mm. And he doesn't remember anything about it. Wow, wow, wow. And that's important because when you wow. look at and, and study, you know, reincarnations, important uh, characteristics of it are, number one, uh, particularly military things with deaths, uh, usually mm -hmm. it's, it's someone who died before their time. Mm -hmm. And they usually have some kind of a mark representing where they died, where they <sighs> would kill them. And he, he was pointing that time. That was, we all thought, as a birth marker, you know. Yeah, sure. So, um, anyways, you know, I, I lived with that for years. Never right. thought about it for years until I had contacted and Bobby and found out that everything was normal. So, needless to say, I grew up with that and it got my interest. And uh, uh, later on in life, I, I get back into it. And uh, having grown up in, an, in a neighborhood where a lo we had a lot of memorials to... yes veterans being killed during wars us too. it was very common to us yep. a lot of debts i had lost my parents both in their 40s when i was a young kid so had a lot of death but and of course in church being a devout catholic we would you know we would not believe in reincarnation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but oh, anyways yes. over the years and in having that experience always in my mind i consider myself in the three percent mm. And so I just wanted to say that, you know, when you look at that, one of the important things is this regression uh, therapy that people go through. And uh, there's a lot to be said about it, but uh, but there are things that it can bring out. You know, it's a hypnotist. It's, it's hypnotizing, uh, right? You're but, being hypnotized, uh, basically, right? You're being it's hypnotized. hypnotized. Yep. I mean, the idea is that they're, but they're, they're also bringing things out but giving you suggestions. And that's where I, I go off. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe in these ones where the, the People are two or three years old because normally the characteristics of these uh, reincarnating case, cases are, as I mentioned, you know, that someone who died before their time, usually at a long age, young age, and they remember these things like Bobby when they're three, four, five years yes. old. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Because the, their brains at that age, you know, they haven't seen a lot. Right. You know, Bobby, as far as I know, never saw TV before he used to come to my house. Right. So it wasn't as if he had something. His father was in the war, never mentioned the war. That right. family was very low-key. Yep, yes, never yes. talked about death. Everything always had to be happy. Yes. So, so based on that and the fact that they do lose that memory over years. Interesting, you know, Two or three yeah. years. So to, to me, the real reincarnation cases are these young people who have this memory. Mm. And like Bobby, waking up in the middle of the night screaming and man, how horrifying. weird is that? That is just so, so you know, strange, so strange. It really know? is. It, but you know, and and uh, but I will tell you, you know, there's a lot of good books out there. Mm -hmm. uh, recent books talk about different people that have gone through that. One is Anne Frank. Oh, right, Anne Frank. Anne Frank, sure. uh, in diary from World War II. Yep. Uh, there's a, a great book uh, from this woman who 
grew up who was born nine years after Anne Frank died. And she could remember things that were unbelievable. Oh, that's weird. She went into the town in Amsterdam where Anne Frank lived. And, and someone said, uh, oh, do you want me to take you over? They said, no, I know where it is. And she walked right to the house. Um, so anyways, there were those kind of things, too. So I find this really interesting. Uh, you know, there are pieces of it that you just can't dispute. Right, sure. And, right. And, uh, you know, some of it's hocus pocus. But I'll, I'll tell you, I... No one's been able to figure it out. But one last thing, if you're interested, you can go online and they have a past life regression test. Mm -hmm. A couple of websites. Oh, ho, ho. Basically, what you do, you go on there. It's for Let's free. Let's do that. Yes. They have a bunch of questions. Hmm. Yeah, they have a bunch of questions to test if you have had a past life experience. Wow. And I did I did the test. Oh, you really? Yes. Yeah. I, and uh, Were you yeah, a princess and it gives you a result Egypt? after that. What was it? It asks you questions like... Uh, Oh, I want Raven a to take this. Badass pirate. It was what I was. <laughs> oh, you turned out to be a pirate, did you? <laughs> a badass pirate is what I was. Really? And, uh, yes. Because I answered questions like, I love the ocean. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, yes. I love power and things like that. that <laughs> I have a sword. Apparently. <laughs> right. I have a, pa I have a like parrot. A bird sit on your shoulder. Yes, there's a bird on your shoulder. <laughs> I, I like having a patch on my eye. There you go. But okay, why not? Anyways, if, you, if you're interested <laughs> in uh, them. Go ahead. doing a past life regression, I, I suggest you go... Uh, online and just look for under you know past life sure. past regression yes uh, there's a bunch of them out there and, and uh, so it's it's a lot of fun one one you, you got to uh, do that man you know, how long does it take how how long would it take club on the air how long because it, it would it take five minutes to complete even, the process and get an answer yeah, there's, there's like six questions there we go jj and we'll find you out submit and uh, so i'm i'm very happy i'm i, I just did that today he's a badass pirate. for the show Okay. So I'm going out tomorrow. I've got to get some pirate gear. I'm really, really yeah. Uh, Don't get Pittsburgh. But, you know, the last thing in Don't. that regard, I remember okay. as a kid on Halloween being a pirate. I had a pirate suit. Really? Yeah. Huh. I loved it. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Don't get so, Pittsburgh pirates anyway, so gear because they're terrible. Okay. Go ahead. No, but you know the Buccaneers. The, bu the Buccaneers. Oh, we don't want to go there. Yes, I know. I know. They're our so new there's team. there's something about that. There's, there is something about that. They are. Buccaneers are pirates. That's true. Yeah. Okay, you know more people watch that game, the game in 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 the Boston area than in the Tampa Bay area. Talking about yeah, our time of show, that. yeah. How about that? Like fifty six percent. I mean, yep. What does that tell you? Like fifty two percent. There's. I went on. This is from the city that we traded. Still love our TB twelve. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. This is from the city that traded Babe Ruth. All right, Moogie Betts, Bobby Orr. These are these, you know, this is but what at happens. least the Red Sox got something for Babe Ruth. That's the owner true. Of, Who was it? Got that, uh, that bat boy. Got a, wasn't it an actress or something? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, that's right. No, for, for no, no, Nanette. They needed money to produce a yeah. Broadway show. That's what the Red Sox owners were doing yeah. way back then. Anyway, yeah. club, that's crazy. You know, I mean, I, I go back to, with reincarnation, I go back to the same thing with as ghost stories, UFOs, whatever. Maybe it's all connected, but the thing is, Everyone can't be making these things up. They can't all be hoaxes. And when a four-year-old kid is a kid, basically kindergarten, if kindergarten, is running around talking about the style of guns and I was in a battle and having trouble with it, what else could it be? You know what I mean? There's, as you say, he hasn't been around enough to absorb the miseries of this planet to have these bad nope. thoughts, you know? And the fact that those memories go away when you're seven or eight, that's when memories go away for... Kids that don't have things like that, that's when you really kind of start thinking and remembering things, you know, seven or eight or so. So whose memories are they? Yeah, everything gets, you know, knocked out of your brain. Then mm. you're learning new things. You're learning new things, yeah. yeah. Wow, what a strange story. That's a strange story. That would, so let, me, let me just very quick, if you don't mind, let me just tell you my weird story, okay? Because we were telling weird stories tonight. Club, are you good? Are you good as far as uh, your report? Yeah, I did want to say, though, there's a new theory out there, just you may be interested. I like this. Is that um, there are cases where people reincarnate from other planets. Mm. And uh, so that's becoming wow. quite a uh, research thing now. That, wow. A what? That wow. The, the, you know, that we're not, the, the, I think we all of us who believe that there's, we're not the only ones yes. in, the, in the whole whatever scheme of the universe and everything else. So yes. <laughs> the, there's a theory out there from some people that have gone through regression that 
they're uh, they could be uh, they could have originally been on different planets raven so did, that you we constantly reincarnate did you have so tentacles you raven could have originated in uh, Pluto or someplace. No. Well, I, I bet you they wouldn't admit it that they came from Uranus. Oh, come on, Switchy. Come <laughs> on. That's easy. Too easy. You knew someone was going to do a Uranus. Too easy, of boy, course. Oh, boy. <laughs> I wanted to say it before somebody else did. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Halfway through the show. That was that was so easy, Switch. Hey, Raven, we, were you? No, but I t always take the easy route. That's uh, true. Uh, Raven. All my past lives, where I always took the it. easy route. Yeah. Hey, the path is now in the side, the other side of your head. Oh. <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Hey, I Raven. can uh, Raven. fix that. Did you have tentacles? Do you have tentacles in your dream or anything crazy like that? I wish. No. no. Unfortunately. Yeah, I it's, wish. Okay. It's, it's super normal, but it's it's just so yeah, that's, freaking bizarre. That's what makes you things know? creepy. Yeah. Let me just tell you this. I this, guess you don't know because I, I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> oh, good. Give it some thought. Yeah. 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 Think about uh -huh. it. Yeah. That's the weird thing. It'd be interesting to see, really, all kidding aside, it would be interesting to see what Someone who knew what they were talking about, you know, like a, a, a dream, you know, interpreter or something, what they would have to say about that, you know, because that's very odd. I think having it yeah. twice a month, man, for all these years, it's it's the universe and trying to tell you something. up until now, it, it, I'm literally turning 31 in a, a couple of days. Don't tell people that. It, you look like you're about 18 like, years old. Forever. Okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she looks like I mean, really. She doesn't look old enough to drink. That's man. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Listen, I got a filter on. I got makeup. Like I, makeup. I make myself look real young. A filter. <laughs> Give us those filters. Let's do makeup before but, we yeah, have thunder. It's, it's weird that like it's it has been going on for as long, and it it's never ever stopped. That's it's strange. Just, and it it was never scary, so it was like right. it always seemed normal. Yeah. You know, up until I got old enough to realize what reincarnation was, and I was like, oh, this isn't normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's something weird. Well, see, that's what's strange, okay? And I, I'm gonna, I was only thinking about this story on the way up, and that's the only reason I want to tell it, because it's almost like the same thing, in a way. Uh, it's not reincarnation, but it's really got me, at a young age, thinking about kind of odd things, let's say, things that weren't, you know, normal, paranormal. Anyway, real quick, growing up in the hood, I used to walk to school every day, school day, and in the hood, and there would be this woman Standing on the corner, across the street, uh, you know, every time we would go back and back and forth uh, home for lunch. We used to go home for lunch, if you can believe it, all right, and walk back. She'd be out there smoking cigarettes. She was very identifiable. She had this kind of gray hair, but up in a kind of beehive, B-52 type of thing going on. Now, this is, you know, a few years ago, let's say. But she was always dressed in the same clothes. And I want to say... The word moo, moo but I don't think moo, moo was really the right term. But a moo, moo was kind of like a all-encompassing dress, right? Moo, moo. Okay. Well, she would wear like let's say yeah, a popular like a, for a like while. a big one. Yeah, yeah big one, one thing. piece, all the same pattern. Yeah. Right. But she would wear that. But she would. But it was short, and she would also wear like cut off at the calf dungarees. Do you know what I mean? And, and man's loafers. Okay. So who knew what was going on? But anyway, she was kind of an identifiable person. She's probably in her. 40s. And you'd just see her. You'd see the grocer every day. You'd see the fireman every day. You'd see, you know, you'd see her every day. She'd be out there smoking a butt. No big deal. You know, in the neighborhood I grew up, no big deal. So when I was a kid, and I mean before I was double digits, we took, the family took a trip to Philadelphia because our cousins lived down there. It was actually a suburb of Philly. And this was a big deal for me. This was the biggest trip I've ever taken, going to Philly, where it's hot in the summer. That's all I could think of. I mean, for months, I was saying, what comic books am I going to take with me? You know what I mean? What what toys am I going to take with me? What squirt guns am I going to take with me? I had to plan this. So <clears throat> we go down, and we're staying at my cousin's. Now, I'm, I'm like eight, nine years old, and my cousin was a senior in high school, and he was a big jock. Okay, this guy's a really good athlete. And he just said to me one day, you know, one of the days I was down there, come on down to the field because I'm pitching today. You want to see me pitch? So, yeah, they probably want to get rid of me. So, okay. We get down to this field. It's in um, some suburb of Philly, kind of a affluent suburb. Let's say my uncle was a big shot in city service, which is now Sitco. So we're in a nice part of the world. Sitting in the field, sitting on the stands, my cousin's pitching. I look across the field. There's this woman. 
there's the woman. She's in her mumu. The same looking woman. The, it's the same woman. She's in her mumu. She's in her weird pants. She's wearing the penny loafers. She's got the hair, and she's smoking a butt. And she's over, she's in the on the opposed side, you know, <clears throat> stands. Butchers. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sounds like Aunt Hilda. So I'm sitting there. I'm going, and because I'm a did kid. Did you approach her? No, 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 no. No, I, I wish I did, and I thought about it, but that just isn't something you do because as a kid, all I'm thinking is, Hey, there's that lady. Wow, she's in Philadelphia too. Isn't that odd? You know, and, and you know, I thought about right. it. Yeah. You know, I thought about, but then yeah, you're not connecting those dots. Right. That's like this only is think it's really a, odd. It's right. just a weird coincidence. It's that's what I'm thinking. I go, wow, she's in Philly too, because to me, the whole world was Philly uh, in Boston. You know what I mean? There was nothing else beyond. It was just odd that yeah. she was there, but she was there. But the more, and then you know, I went back to school and see her hanging on the corner, smoking the butt. It was just like a regular thing. But the more I thought about it, I thought I should have went up to her. See, we di- I didn't really know her. You know, that's the thing. I didn't really know her. If it was, you know, most people you know. But if it was someone I knew, I'd go right up to him and say, hey, what are you doing here? I never did. And it's always kind of not bothered me, but thinking, hey, what could have happened? But it made me think of, hey, there things could happen in this world that don't conform to what, you know, everyday things are. Odd things can happen. That's an odd thing to me. Yeah, does everything have to make scientific sense? It, it doesn't. She, no. could, she could have been your guardian angel. Did oh, you think God, about that? God help us. That's a good one, Bob. <laughs> That's Sitting, a good, good point. One. Okay, my guardian, guardian angel. angel so smoke. so yeah. what you're saying, my guardian angel hangs out on a corner in Dorchester in a mumu smoking cigarette, chain smoking. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Gotta blend in. Thank you, God. <laughs> What's a but, doppelganger? What, what do they call those? Yeah. Doppelganger, or more importantly, yes. a glitch in the matrix. Oh, the glitch. I, I yes. bet you she was yeah. smoking Virginia Slims. No, oh, no. You know, she was smoking Virginia Slims. She was and they smoking a joint. Yeah, she was smoking yeah. a joint yeah. off Paul Mall. Because if she went all the way to, to Philly, she's come a long way, baby. Yeah, she probably has <laughs> a lot of glitches in that matrix, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah so that. yeah, I've always thought of that as just an odd thing. And the, and the older I get, I, I think that is very, very strange. Even if if it was her, supposing if it was her, what are the chances we'd be in Philly Did at the same? Did she ever go away, Mac? Did she ever go away? Do you remember um, her going for good? No, not. Re- I mean, no. I mean, this probably happened when I was in the fifth, the fifth grade, maybe. And you know, after three years, uh, you know, I was out of that school, but. She was just a regular fixture, to say, you know? You know, you'd always say the fireman, like you'd say the newspaper guy, the grocer. I mean, it was like Penny Lane where I grew up, post office, you know, the mailman. And she was there. I wonder if you ask anyone else if they remembered her hmm. and just, just see what they say. Yeah. Because Club has a really good point where that, that could have been somebody that just kind of had your back oh. and, and maybe... <laughs> Like slipped through through the veil or, or the glitch in the matrix. Wow, something. that would be weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, City of Angels, which that is a would movie, be weird. a movie with um, City of Angels with uh, that nutty guy, um, Nicholas Cage. Yes, oh yeah, okay. I and love that that's movie. That's an unbelievable movie. And my movie. husband gives me so much crap for really? it because he says it's a it's a crap movie. Smack and him. It's for great. One, one. I love it. Yeah, tell him one one. Smack him and said one one wanted to do this. The thing about the City of Angels <laughs> I is will do that. <laughs> it's like a non-religious story about angels. Okay, they they keep religion exactly. out of exactly right. Exactly, it's perfect. It, and they and they show scenes where you know the actors will be kind of interacting of what's going on in the in the movie, but in the background you'll see these people just kind of standing and watching over people, and that's the guiding angels, and they're regular people, but they do kind of right. It's a really cool movie. It's a, it's a cool movie. The guy from I NYPD love that is in it, movie. And, and my husband always makes fun of me. Wow. He's like, "This movie is such a piece of crap." Wow. Okay. Okay. That sounds like two stars. <laughs> <laughs> piece of. Crap. Maybe he thinks uh, Quentin Tarantino directed it. You don't know. Is he misinformed? What was that uh, John Travolta movie? What was it called? Michael or something? Oh, we used an angel, the drunken angel. Yeah, yeah Michael. Michael. Angel. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's also an odd movie. Yep. That, yeah, that was strange. My friend John Travolta was in that movie. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that's some, right. You're buds with John Travolta. Well, you know, not lately. But, yeah, we are buds. You could say we go back a long time. Actually, I've we said could try this, and get him on the show. I've, oh, that would be good. That would be a stretch. But I've said this before. Yeah. I was in a movie with him, met him. Good I guy. Know. 
Good. Yeah. yeah I, you always, box lunch with them. Great. You know, I always thought, I don't know, you think of all these guys as just being Hollywood a-holes. I've said this before many times, but he wasn't. He was just a normal freaking guy. You know, he came over, talked to us. He always had people with him, but he was just a normal guy. He really was accommodating and no Hollywood BS. And of all the people you would think you would get it from, you'd think you'd get it from him, you know, but. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you just never know. Yeah, you never know. If I hadn't met him, I would have always, always thought he was kind of like an a-hole, but he's not. I think That's Nancy Wilson's my, my guardian angel. Whoa. See? Yeah, I get some chick in a moo-moo and you can't. Like... Nancy Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What's wrong with this picture? So listen, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a commercial break now? And we'll continue the discussion or talk about something else when we come back. Uh, from this ad. So you're listening to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Raven is here. Club is here. Switch is here. And JJ is here. Uh, and we'll be right back after this. UFOs are found in Renaissance art, on ancient coins, and etched on cave walls. They're even reported in the Bible. But more surprising is when UFOs are seen the most in times of war. Through centuries, thousands of UFO sightings have been made by high-ranking officials, military pilots, and ordinary soldiers. Often, these fantastic appearances occur at the height of great battles. From World War I to D-Day to Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, military investigators are baffled. Why do UFO sightings spike so drastically during wartime? Could it be mistaken aircraft, or is someone, or something, looking in on us? In UFOs in wartime, what they didn't want you to know, Mac Maloney chronicles centuries of these incredible sightings and tries to solve the puzzle of why so many UFOs are seen while humanity is at war. Read about the scare ships, the ghost planes, and the ghost rockets, alien giants in the jungles of Vietnam, UFOs controlling our ICBM bases, dogfights with flying saucers during the Gulf War, and more. 300 pages of unbelievable stories, along with many startling photographs. That's UFOs in Wartime, What They Didn't Want You to Know, by Mac Maloney. On sale at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Where are my shades? Here they are. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show we have for you tonight. We're calling it Weirdo Palooza because we had some fascinating stories, real-life stories, real-time stories, uh, real recollections of um, events of reincarnation, which I've never gone through. Juan, have you ever gone through it? The very famous Juan Juan said. Do you, have, do you feel like you're reincarnated, Juan? What could no, you have been no, in a private, previous no. life? No, I mean, I've had uh, maybe deja vu experiences, but I, don't yeah, think, I think that's like kind of a different thing. Is, uh, anyway, one one is anywhere. here. You'd be like a street walker in New Orleans or something, wouldn't you? If you wanted to come back, wouldn't that be a, a street walker? In New Orleans? I don't know, that's what just came to me. Who knows? Maybe run a bordello in New Orleans. There you go. That? The business angle. Good for you. You have a model. You're ready yeah, to go. Right. Uh, I'll be the uh, the entertainment. Speaking of uh, topics like that, I sorry, have, middle-aged I ladies. Have memories of being a, a toaster. There you go. That's uh, we'll That's introduce him soon. I have memories of being a toaster in a past life. Okay, is there a punchline there? Anonymous voice or not? <laughs> no, that was <laughs> that was the punchline. I went right to okay. the punchline. Okay, eighteen fifty for that ad. Get ready. Save time. No cocoa tonight. <laughs> sorry, middle-aged ladies. He's on a secret mission. But the voice you hear is uh, Switchblade Steve Ward up there in the bowl of flakes, the land of donuts. Switch. Great to be here. Hello, Switchy. Good to have you. Howdy. We're going to get back to you Have very soon. Donuts. Okay. He's going to answer Everybody that question under the third degree when we get back. Our security chief is here. If anyone's going to hit you with a phone book, it's this guy, Willie Club. Club, how you doing? Hey, Mac. Okay. Hey, gang. Great night Joe, tonight. I mean, I'll tell you, it, as I thought, it's been very informative. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much more I can take. Yeah, that's how I feel. Okay. Yeah. It's I almost said that's what she said, but that'd be inappropriate. It's almost NPR around here. All right. So look. Also with us, 
uh, beautifying the show is Winona Ryder. Thank you, Winona, for joining us tonight. We really, oh, wait a second. It's Raven. Up and upstate. Raven. Uh, she is. Okay. Just just tell everyone I'm Winona. The, the, I'm okay. Winona. okay. All right. That's fine. And then we'll ask you, so how's, uh, Save us time. How's it going with Johnny? How's it going, uh, Johnny? Johnny and I broke up. Oh, come on. Yeah, oh, come on. He's going to start oh, crying. Oh, back in the 90s. Back in the 90s. Where have you been? Uh, also, <laughs> joining us for some reason uh, is our special guest. Thank you for joining us. And uh, what can I say? Vic the Wop. Vic, how are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm currently dating Johnny. So, are you uh, really? Whoa. So here we go. Is. Okay. We got 45 <laughs> minutes. Let's go. <clears throat> now, let me just introduce. Uh, let me just explain. Vic the Wop uh, is uh, the, you, you pronounce your last name Manja, right? No. What is it? That's the only Italian name. What is it? If you were in the old country, you would say Mignogna. Okay. Victoria Mignogna. Victoria Victoria Mignogna. Victoria. If you were in the old country. Okay. Well, we're in the new country. There are no old countries. (laughs) We're new. Every country is new these days. So uh, I'm sorry, Vic. So could tell us, please, in pure Italian, what is your name? My name is Vittorio Giuseppe Mignogna. Mm. Or as it became when my grandparents came over uh, from the old country, yes. Vic Mignana. Vic Mignana, okay. All so, right, Mignana. All yeah, right. it turned into Mignana. Right. Somewhere along the way, it turned into Mignana in Western PA, where okay. they settled. Doesn't that mean uh, tomorrow Everybody's in Spanish? Got altered at Ellis Island, didn't they? Because the, the stupid clerks at Ellis Island couldn't translate anybody's they, foreign name into they anything. They couldn't spell anything. They couldn't spell. Right. They were they ignorant. To my family they Americanized too. everything right off the bat at right. Ellis yep. Island. John That's Corleone. Cool. Corleone, yeah, yep. you got it. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In, in Ireland, our name was Baloney, and they mixed it up, you know? And that's how I became... Maloney. Wow. We'll put some fake laughter. The best story was Maloney. For the, well, for the best, I'm sure. Okay. Listen, we should <laughs> My explain. My name was Catania. Really? You know what? We should do. We should do the the regression. We're all ther- Italian here in this show. Yeah, we should fact, do we? regression therapy on you, one one, because I've heard that you're Filipino, that you're Irish, that you're Italian, you're French, you're German, Scottish. I'm, I'm mostly I'm mostly Italian and Filipino, but I do have enough Irish to uh, be a wise ass. Draw the battle lines there. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> At least I can walk down the middle of the street, and when they and when they're shooting back and forth, they just they won't listen. hit you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, listen. So listen, Vic. What we should explain to people is that you look and you played Captain Kirk in a YouTube series of Star Trek, which is astonishingly close to the detail of the original show. Do I have that right? You have it exactly right, mm-hmm. my friend. Uh, I started uh, a series called Star Trek Continues. The purpose of the series was to pick up where the original Star Trek series was canceled abruptly in the late 60s, never finished its five-year mission that Kirk Mm -hmm. talked about. And then the next time you saw those characters was 10 years later in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Right. So my intention was to pick up where the original series was canceled and finish the five-year mission and then leave everybody right where they were mm-hmm. when Star Trek The Motion Picture began. And it's, it's got well over 10 million views now, mm-hmm. and uh, it's been very, very well received. When you watch it. Very nicely done. Yeah, it's so say. well done. Thank you. Yeah, because you have the and, sets. And, you, and, you have uh, great guest stars as well. Right, yeah. You oh, have my gosh, guest yes. Stars. In yeah. fact, I want to I tell you guys something. When, when, you know, for the last 50 years, there have been no shortage of Star Trek fan films. Mm -hmm. Uh, There have been fans wanting to play Star Trek and recreate Star Trek ever since the series went off the air, but they've always kind of, I don't know, they're hard to watch for lack of a, you know, to to put it, to put it politely, you know, they're, they're fans. They mean well, you know what I mean? They mean well, they love this thing, but they don't know exactly what made Star Trek, Star Trek. Mm -hmm. They know they can build sets and put on costumes and, and fire phasers and flip open communicators. Yes. But that's not what Star Trek was about. It was the storytelling. It was the thematic messaging. Right. And uh, when I started Star Trek Continues, my goal from the very beginning was to tell thought-provoking, quality stories like the original series did with a theme, mm-hmm. with a point to make, right. a lesson to be learned. Which they did. And, uh, and we set the bar very high when we did. Mm-hmm. We rebuilt the entire soundstage. We brought in 
a bunch of wonderful guest stars from almost any pop series you can think of. Battlestar Galactica, Star mm-hmm. Wars, Buck Rogers, Doctor Who, Buffy, Farscape, Buffy, uh, on cool. and on, the yes. Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yeah, um, cool. Yes, and not only that, but we told really good stories. The production value mm-hmm. is incredibly high, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and in fact, Rod Roddenberry, Rod Roddenberry, Gene Roddenberry's son, yes, said that if his dad were alive today, he would consider this canon. I could see, yeah, yeah. And because tell us who plays Scotty. Yeah. In your series. Oh, yeah. Well, the original Scotty, back in the original Star Trek series, mm-hmm. was played by a wonderful actor from Canada named Jimmy Dewan. Okay. James Dewan uh, played Scotty. And his son, Chris, plays his father's yeah, cool. role. You're right. Uh, also, I should point out that uh, the wonderful, wonderful Grant Imahara from Mythbusters mm-hmm. uh, played Sulu. He did a wonderful job. He was such a great guy. He's great. And uh, tragically, uh, we lost him unexpectedly last year. Oh, wow. Huh? So. uh, Oh, that stinks. Yeah. Well, listen, I have two questions for you. First of all, when you watch the series, okay, when you watch the series and you, like I say, the detail, not just the detail, but you do the same camera angles, you do the same camera shots. It all looks the same. It's, it's. You, you can tell that someone behind the camera knows exactly what they're doing and knows how they did that show back right. then. And that's the compelling thing about it, I think, you know, that, that it's almost minute, second by second, a Star Trek episode. Well, and I appreciate you saying that, Mac. And let me, let me say something about that in particular. A lot of people, a lot of fans out there over the years have wanted to make Star Trek or recreate it. But the problem is they didn't know what it was that made it look like it did. They didn't. Un, they didn't. They didn't have enough production background to know how to light something to make it look like the original right. Star Trek. Yes. Um, how to write it. How to shoot it. How to edit it. The music cues. Mm-hmm. So many elements that go into making it what it was. Right. And I'm very, very proud of the people that 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 we put together. The team that that I put together to make this series. Our goal was to make it seem so much like the original that you felt like it was never canceled. It continued without missing a beat, Mm -hmm. and it finished the five-year mission. The Enterprise returns to Earth, goes into the very same dry dock that it was in when Star Trek The Motion Picture began. I love that idea that you're uh, completing the mission. You know, you're completing the mission. I mean, that's weird. NBC canceled the friggin' show before they can complete the mission, so they complete the mission. So listen, yeah. I'm I'm glad I mean, because the, the the work you did really shows, okay? But here's my second question, okay? Now Raven, don't you think I mean, yes. you know, you're the female here. Don't you think that he looks like a Hollywood hunk? Would you put him down as a Hollywood hunk looking at him? I don't want to put you on the spot, but look at that hair. He's got he's got the quaff, right? Got the hair. He's hunk. Is, yeah, is there the you go. Quaff, yeah. Is, is the quaff necessary? Now it is, yeah, <laughs> yes. Cloth, right? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Don't flatten it. No, no, don't no, flatten it. Don't. Good, do. It looks good. Listen like to what you guys said. said. Right. You look like somebody I went to high school with. Not looks like Brian Adams. Read, read between the lines. <laughs> well, man, it's it's such a weird like coincidence. Is it really? I, no. I'm not. I'm not kidding you. You look like somebody I went to high school with. See now. It's see very now. Very bizarre. Steve. And that's now not Steve a bad knows thing. where I got that where I got that thing that I, when I said that earlier. Now he knows where it came from. Oh, <laughs> you, you didn't hear that. Okay, that was that other girl. Well, listen. <laughs> wow. Holy cow! Oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Double personality. Listen. Speaking I, of Steve, and, and also Vic, I, I always, I always love. You know, I'm a huge fan of the original series. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. more than the other ones. Uh, not to knock any of the, the great work that they've done on all the subsequent ones, but there's something magical yes. about that first series, yes. uh, even with the l- lower budgets that they had. Sure, yeah. lightning in a bottle, man. Yeah. They, they yep. captured something that you that is very, very difficult to recreate. Right. It's, it's, I hate to compare it like this, but it's almost like the Beatles, you know, and all these fan shows, they're kind of like a garage band playing a Beatles song, and they don't understand what goes into it. That I think what, what with the original Star Trek series, only because we know the background is, they did the ultimate best with the little that they had, and that they had the they had the the oh, continual, yes. Oh, yes. you know, hot ons from the network bugging them and stuff, and, and they just and they and they overcame it, and then they get canceled, and then for ten years they begged them to come back on. I mean, this is these suits. Well, yeah, hey Mac, Mac, Mac said you a bad know- word. 
Do you know why they canceled them? Do you know why they wanted it had something to, to do with Lucy Obama? There was a real before, story behind it. Yeah, go even ahead. before even before it got on the air, the executives wanted to cancel wow, it. Wow, that's bad. Because it cost too much money. Right. Really? Yeah. It was too expensive. It was too expensive to make. It was the most expensive show ever made to that point in history. Wow. And huh. the executives kept wanting to tank it. When it first premiered, it won its time slot every week. Yeah, I remember and that whole people story. people loved it. Right. But they wanted to destroy it, so they started putting it in crappy time slots right, right, right. on crappy weeknights to try to kill it. Mm-hmm. And they kept knocking down the budget year to year. Yeah, and you could tell. Less yeah. money. But that's what I mean. With. They came up uh, with really good ideas with the was, little, with the shrinking budgets. You know, they, they knew how to do it. And I know it wasn't easy. And I know that, you know, we've talked to people who said they used to deliver the show an hour before it was supposed to be on and had all this drama and everything. But when you watch it and when you consider well, what they did, when they did it, and it's always this message, the same consistent message, you know, I mean, some of the acting is corny. Yes. Some of the, some of it, a lot of it is corny. But if you just sit and watch one and think, you know, they, they were doing this in '68. Come on, you know, this is a long yeah. time ago, and and, and you can still sit and watch them. Yeah, it's great storytelling. Yeah, it's great storytelling. Great story right. telling. There's a the reason that we are still having Star Trek shows on television and Star Trek movies in the theaters is not because of the special effects. It's not because of the big budget appeal. Yep. It's yes. not because of the sets or the costumes. It was because they were telling compelling human dramas that still resonate with people today. Right. I have to and say this. The great interaction between the players right. and the characters. Right. Yes. And you knew the pl- you knew them. You knew who they were, you know. I got to say this is Raven is what about from William Shatner. Uh, we, we we that's a what sore about spot. William Shatner's role in that. <laughs> do, you, do you think he Deserves credit for a lot of its popularity. Or he absolutely some people does. criticize him. Yes. He absolutely does. And yes. I'll tell you why. Okay. Because back then. Hang on, Raven. Back then, television shows were completely built around the leading man. Mm-hmm. Yep. They were. Li- in fact, people Air don't quotes. even realize this, but Star Trek was literally intended, Roddenberry intended for Star Trek to be through the eyes of Captain Kirk. That's why every episode started with Captain's Log, mm. star date such and such. These were supposed to be the experiences of this starship captain. Oh, interesting. And, if, and I mean, the responsibility for the success of that show fell squarely on Bill Shatner's shoulders, and he carried that baby. He did. I mean, you know, I know that he wasn't, you know, and I know, Vic, that you don't like to... Um, you know, disparage him, uh, but uh, there's stories no. that he is, you know, he was like the guy, but when you, th- you know, he was, let's say, a prima donna or whatever, but when you watch the show, everything revolves around him. Everything, even when he's not yes. in the show, he's captured, they got to go get him, you know, whatever. He is the center part of that show. Okay, for, and I got to throw this to Raven. Yes, and you know what? And, and Well, let me just say real quick before okay. Raven, I'm sorry. That's Raven, okay. Let me just say this real quick about that, Mac. Yes. Mac, you know, there's so much revisionist history going on nowadays. Yes. Um, other secondary supporting actors from Star Trek in the 60s coming out and spreading garbage about Shatner, yes. talking about what a prima donna he was. Well, guess what? I have news for those actors. Oh. They were nobodies. They were day players. The show was about Captain Kirk. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about Sulu. It wasn't about Chekhov. They were day players. Okay. Wow. The the responsibility for the show was on Shatner's shoulders. In fact, you guys, it didn't become an ensemble show until the motion pictures came out. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could I, I guess you could make a point. No, it's like true. That. Yeah, no, you can make a point it, on it that that true. they made a big and deal on. Well, the other Brooke, characters were was almost uh, as important as uh, they were Captain more in, it, more it's in the plot. Right that's thing. for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Well, especially Spock. I mean, Bill Spock. Bill Shatner was Bill Shatner was the star of the show. Yeah, he was star of the show. They went no out and right. found. They found Bill Shatner to play that role because it was the main role of the show. Yes. And Shatner knew that if the show succeeded or failed, it was on him. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't give it to a shrinking violet, you know, that's for sure. Uh, so, Raven. Exactly. Exactly. This is the third time I'm coming to you, and I can't remember what I was going to ask you. So let me ask you this, right? So were you ever a Star Trek fan, the original show? 
did you watch it like as a from your crib as a baby or something? <laughs> <laughs> I was a Star Wars fan. Star Wars. Oh. Star Wars. That's the, uh, the two words they don't but want to hear. My parents uh, were Star Trek fans. Really? So I am familiar with it. Hey, Raven. Um, I know your father. I know of. Uh oh. Um, what is that? Uh, Raven, check out. Uh, what is that? Check it out. What is that? What is that? Is that what I think it is? Plug it in. Luke's lightsaber, baby. <laughs> oh, man. This is when yeah. you don't want to be a TV show. It was, it, was about about tw- it was about 12 oh, yeah. inches long and metallic, and it looked like you plugged it in. Listen. Yeah. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like Dustin Crabs, boy. <laughs> <Look>. <laughs> there you go. Before I forget. But oh, go ahead. So Will Shatner was in a really good horror movie a few years ago, really? and it was called A Christmas Horror Story. So if anyone's looking for William a good, Shatner um, was Christmas in that movie? movie, that's also a horror story. He was available, huh? Wow. Check out check out Retro TV, uh, the old uh, a thriller series hosted by Boris Karloff. He's in a lot he was of in a great <laughs> episode called The mm-hmm. Grim Reaper. Oh, huh? Really? Oh, wow. He was and in he was Twilight Zone. The, the lady that was on there is the lady that played Lubby on Gilligan's Island. Really? Oh, yeah. Was she a babe yeah, back a great, then? Great, great episode. To say? Okay. <laughs> You know, it, that's funny because you mentioned how Star Trek was written. Okay, we're talking with Victor Wap here, who is someone who is a Star Trek expert, and also uh, he did a YouTube and I, series. By the way, I take no offense at that name. Well, you're proud I of your. A, I do have a backbone. Yes. I, 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 I do have a spine, and I'm not paper thin. Right. I, I don't take any offense at that at all. You're proud of your Italian heritage, correct? Yes, okay. I grew up with that. You guys know what I'm talking about. I do know. Yes. Everybody made jokes about that kind of stuff. Nobody took kidding. it seriously. Right. Everybody's so easily offended now. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. Okay. You know, in, in, in Vic- I was never offended by it. <laughs> Vic the Meatball doesn't have the same rhythm to it. I love Vic the Wall. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is this, is that you were mentioning how they wrote on Star Trek, okay? And, and, yeah. and Raven lives in the same town that Rod Sterling grew up in. Okay, oh, very close, uh-huh. and wow. and the, and that's wow. the thing. Twilight Zone is the same thing, because when you watch them, yes. it's fifties TV. Okay, and you have to kind of realize it's fifties TV. It's black and white. It's not elaborate, but the stories they told that's that's what made them. And and oddly, they had almost the same history as Star Trek. He was always getting, you know, crap from the suits and do this, do that, and they completely screwed him when they brought Night Gallery back. But, you know, he was really an early TV man. This guy was, you know, near genius how he used to do it. I, I loved that yeah, show. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I couldn't get writing, enough of that show. His writing was amazing. Yeah. And he had One a lot of, of stars. One of the great tragedies about Star Trek was they didn't, they didn't start to bring in or worry about demographics until the year after. Right. And then they discovered that Star Trek, even though maybe the ratings weren't as big as some of them, uh, they had the perfect demographics that they wanted to sell products. And they had it all, all along, mm-hmm. all three years. It was doing extremely well with demographics. Mm-hmm. And so the suits, the knuckle draggers, the morons, yes. the, the so-called creative people just really missed the boat. Yep, yep. yep. By one year. The 18, that's the first time they went 18 to 36. And they realized, hey, these are the people in the country who spend money and they're all watching friggin' Star Trek. And we just canceled the thing. I mean, that's yeah. literally what in fact, happened to that, them. In fact, in fact, Mac, that death time slot that I mentioned that they put Star Trek in finally, it was like Saturday night. Right. Date sometime night. Sometime later. Right. Sometime like, I think it was, everybody was out. Everybody yeah, right. was out 10 partying. o'clock. Right. 10 o'clock on Saturday nights. You know, you're either in bed or you're out. I have a question for Vic. Uh, now, a lot of people uh, denigrate the third season, but I like, there's a lot of episodes I loved in the third season. Oh, yes. Really? I don't. I don't uh, look at it disparagingly at all. Even some oh, of the so-called bottle shows where they were just on the ship or whatever. Right. Oh, yeah. So I just wonder what you thought about it. Absolutely. There, in fact, one of my favorite episodes was in the third season, Requiem from Methuselah. Ah, yes. And, uh, mm. and the, you know what's br- what's beautiful about the third season is, as somebody mentioned earlier, the network kept cutting their budgets. They kept cutting their budgets, and so they had to try to accomplish the same goal – with less money. That's and what's cool. You guys, you guys know the old saying: necessity is the mother yes. of invention. That's what made they it so came good. Up with amazing stories because they had to. Right. Yes. With so little to work with, that's what's. That's where I hate to say it, but that's where the genius comes out. And once again, I want to compare it to the Beatles, and I know I shouldn't, but the thing what made them great was, like the first year of them being popular, they made like four 
albums, okay, and a movie, and toured, and did all the other Beatles stuff they had to do. They were under the gun, to to, and they created music that's going to be with us forever. You know what I mean? Let's let's face it. Star Trek is something that yep. everyone is always going to know. You know, like we know Mozart and all that stuff now, Dickens and all that jazz now. People are going to know Star Trek. They're going to know Star Wars too. But because it's had yeah. such a broad influence, both of those things, on all of us, on generations of people. You know, it's like the sci-fi of the masses yeah. in a way, you know. So it's a it's a great show. Yeah. I don't think they knew what they were doing really at the time. I know that everyone was high. Gene Roddenberry was a big weed guy. I think that added to it. And I know there were tensions on the set. I think that adds to it. I know Spock was a guy who, Leonard Nimoy, who grew up next neighborhood over from me in the hood in Mattapan. And I know that people have told us that, you know, he was a big star. Shatner was a big star. When the when the grade B stars had any kind of problems with the suits, they'd go to Leonard Nimoy. And he was kind of a cold guy, but he would go up and defend them, you know. He would get them the extra yeah. money and stuff. He was that kind of guy. So, it's Absolutely. an interest. The, the whole show is interesting. And the switch, who's the, what's the name of the guy who writes those books? Uh, uh, Vic will know. The guy who writes the books on Star Trek. He's yeah, written, Mark. Mark Cushman. Yeah, Mark. Mark Cushman. Man, you got to yeah, Mark Cushman. Yeah, if in you're fact, a, you guys. In fact, I in fact I did an audio book version of the first season that mark book that mark cushman wrote mm -hmm. these are the voyages yes is the name of the book series and he wrote one book for each season of the original series and the publisher actually hired me to do an audiobook version of it and man i learned so much did you do it as uh kirk workings and the behind yeah the yeah he has everything he has memos he has he amazing. has uh, he has everything. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we can get it <laughs> we in see there. your hands. Well, it keeps disappearing, but it's there. Vic, did you do the we voiceover? Go. There, there, you there go. it is. There it is. <laughs> did you do the voiceover as Kirk, Vic? Did you do the voiceover as James T? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I, I, I did the voice of the narrator. Yes. And then whenever Shatner would talk, you would do I it. would do Shatner's voice. Will you do a little Shatner then, for us, please? Will you no, do, but come I want to tell you. Why? I have, I, have, I have to tell you. Why? I, ha I, involved, I involved 70 or 80 different people in this audio book. Adam okay. Nimoy Adam reads Nimoy. his father's excerpts. Okay. We even got some of the people that were still alive at the time. Yes. Like Dorothy Fontana, DC Fontana, mm -hmm. and uh, and Joe D'Agosta, and Clint Howard. Wow, Clint Howard, Opie's yeah. brother. Yeah. 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 Opie's brother. These, these people <laughs> that were that were actually there came to my studio and recorded their own excerpts. Yes. For the book. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Listen, Amazing. come on, just give us a little. Amazing. Give us a little James T, please. And, and we're going to go to a commercial and we're going to bring you back. Please, Vic, please. Can you just say we'll be right back after this as James T, please. Raven will send you an autographed picture of any pose you want. Please. <laughs> I'll send you whatever you want. But yeah, see? <laughs> please. Good deal. James T. Is Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, and we will be back shortly. Do you know where the world's most secret bases are located? Do you know what spooky action at a distance means? Is there a conspiracy by aliens to prevent us from conquering space? And where is the best place in the United States to see a real UFO? Find the answers to all these questions and more in Mac Maloney's new book, Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe. Visit places you never knew existed. The Phantom Tunnels of Tokyo, the UFO Trail in South America, Hong's Hat, and the very mysterious M Triangle. Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe contains hundreds of reports on ghosts, haunted planes and ships, weird celebrity deaths, mysterious sounds, and a breakdown of every monster in America, state by state. You've heard him talk about it on the radio. Now, get all of Mac's paranormal research in one large volume. Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe, with a forward by the very famous Juan Juan. On sale now in your local bookstore or on Amazon.com.
Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Style Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Well, what a show we have for you tonight. It's uh, evolved into something that wasn't according to the script, but that's good. It is uh, a weird palooza, though. And starting off weird with the weird, the very famous Juan Juan is here. Sorry, JJ, I had no gazenta there. So, <laughs> Hello, Mac. Hello, girls. Hanging in there with the show. The show is really, it is weird. It's its off. It's almost off the rails. But off it's, the rails. Uh, it's hanging in there. It's in, it's in the right direction. You know why I don't have my shades on? Hang on. Suddenly we're back on the rails. Okay. JJ's it's, here. Uh, sorry, uh, middle-aged MILFs. Uh, Coco it's not inappropriate either. is on a secret mission. He'll be back soon, though. Uh, up there in the bowl of flakes, our national correspondent in the world of donuts, Switchblade Steve Watt, Switchy. Great to be here tonight. Okay. Also, good to see you, Switch. Doing his best way, Belgian impersonation, our security chief, Willie Club. Willie. Hi, Mac. Hi, folks. Good yeah. time tonight. He lives in Methuen, Mass., and we found out that there's lots of drones flying over Methuen looking for criminal activity, correct? Oh, they're looking for everything. Okay. Uh, also, they're looking for the Methuen Mall. There you go. Where is it? It's very hard to get to that place, even though it's... Yeah, where's the Methuen Mall, for crying out loud? Uh, I, don't, I never heard of it. There you go. See, <laughs> they, want, they don't want you to know one. Uh, really? Yes. Uh, wow. Okay, listen. Uh, also joining us uh, only because um, she evens out the mug faces here is our, uh, our friend Raven up there in upstate New York. Raven, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you? Hi, Raven. Winona Hi. Raven. I, I almost fell Winona into Raven. yeah. I, I, I almost fell it. into that. Yeah, Winona Raven. How about that? Okay, Winona. Yeah, yeah. Because she looks like Winona right? Anyway, talking about people who look I like wish. people. <laughs> joining us here is William Shatner. Bill, thanks for joining us. No, no, listen. It's Vic the Wop. Vic the Womp who was the star of a YouTube series. You have to go see it. Star Trek Continues. And it's it's like a shot-by-shot shot Star Trek episodes, and it finishes the five-year mission, which I think is is the coolest thing ever. I really I love the philosophy behind that. And uh, if you just sit and watch it, it, it's almost like you, I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's like you're watching the original series, but it's it's different, you know. I don't want to say bizarro, but it's different. And... Um, he did a great job. So anyway, Vic, thanks for joining us. Vic plays Captain James T. Kirk on the show. And you look it's like a pleasure him. pleasure to it, join you guys. Thank you. But you act like him. That's another thing. I mean, you do look like him. But when you're in that series, you your face looks like him. Okay, you're shot in the same angles and stuff. But it, you act like him, correct? I mean, how hard is it to act like there was, him? Well, you know what? I got to tell you. Um, as we've talked about before, um, I love Bill Shatner. He was a childhood father figure and a hero when I was a little boy yes. watching Star Trek. And so when I decided I was going to make this show, the last thing I would ever do would be to mock or satirize his performance. In fact, what I wanted was to pay tribute and on an on homage to what he did. So, um, I started going, I started auditioning for school plays and started acting when I was young because of Shatner and Star Trek. So um, I, I, my, my desire to try to uh, get as close to his performance as possible was to pay tribute. Again, yes. I wanted people to feel like they were watching a continuation yes. of the original series. Well, you mission um, accomplished. I didn't need to remake, you know what I mean? I didn't need to reimagine. Right. Captain Kirk. Shatner did a perfect job playing Captain Kirk. What I needed to do was to continue that character right. and make the audience feel like they were watching the development of those same characters. Mm -hmm. Well, you did and, that. Uh, yeah, you certainly you said, did that. www.startrekcontinues.com. It's all free to watch mm. because it wasn't made for money. It was made for love. Well, that shows, you know, that's kind of, that's original cool. original episodes. Right. Yeah, all original. Yes, but, but 11, written 11... But yes, written in the 11 same full kind of length thing. episodes, full length, 11 full length episodes that pick up where the original series was canceled 
and finish right where the motion picture begins. And lots of it's a perfect closure to the one of the most iconic series in television history that never had an ending. Lots of, Is there lots some of, behind the scenes episodes involved in that uh, series? I'm sorry? I'm sorry. Some behind the scenes episodes. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah. If you go to Star Trek continues.com, mm -hmm. you can see not only all of all 11 of our episodes there for free, but there are dozens of blooper reels behind the scenes. Oh, that's footage, great. I love that stuff. Uh, cool. Background stuff about the making of the episodes. Mm -hmm. um, all of the episodes were very, very thoughtfully written and created to, like we talked about before. Um, feel like the original series mm -hmm. in their yeah. storytelling style and mm -hmm. in their thematic messaging. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm very proud of our team and what we did. And you know what? I need to tell you guys, yes. Mac, all of you guys, yes. Raven, Ray Bulger, yes. Juan Juan, Whitey Bulger. you know, yeah. switchy, uh, switchy, Steve, all of you guys. Yes. Be before I forget. Yeah. Switchy. So sorry. Before I forget. Hey, wasn't he a, uh, an actor or something? Yeah, let's see. Yes, he was. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. You call me Ray Bolt. Right? <laughs> Ray Bolt. <laughs> <Joe. laughs> Wizard oh, yeah. of Oz. Um, you Judy guys, Wizard of Oz, wasn't he? Yes, Judy the, Garland. The sets that we built. Yeah. Midgets. Go ahead. The sets that we built for Star Trek Continues are still standing. Mm -hmm. huh. we, we created almost to the inch the original soundstage. Yes. We, we recreated, rebuilt okay. it for our series at least 30 or other or 30 or 40 fan productions have shot on those sets uh, since we finished Star Trek Continues. But the exciting thing I want to tell you and your listeners is those sets are still standing. Mm -hmm. And if you go to www.neutralzonestudios.com, yes. the, these are the guys that have taken over the sets. Okay. And they have open houses once a month. I just came back from one a couple of weeks ago. I'm going sun. again February 19 to 21. Yes. Again, March 19 to 21. Yes. And April 16 to 19. Okay. One weekend every month, they okay. open the doors for fans to come down for free and walk through free. the original sets. And it's like stepping back in time, you guys. It's like walking into a dream. And now you're on you the set. You can walk through the soundstage. Are you there? Pardon me? Are you on the set as James? Yes. Tate? Yes. Okay. And can they talk to you? Can they make well, no, eye contact I, I, with you? I go down. I go down and I give tours of the sets. Oh. Because okay. I was involved in the construction of the sets. Yes. Uh, and our series, and so I I take everybody on personal tours. Yes. Of the sets. Personal. And tell them about how we built them. Okay. Where where we got the things that we made. Good stories about the sets. Okay. Now I ask and, you a uh, question. How many sets are there? There's. Okay. Go ahead. How many sets are there? Uh, well, we we recreated the entire soundstage. Okay. So you've okay. got a big, long, bending corridor. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sick bay. Yep. Engineering. Transporter room. Yep. Briefing oh, cool. room. Yeah. Captain's quarters. Yep. Auxiliary control. Jeffrey's tube. Uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the bridge. Yeah, right. Where, yeah. where is this located? Ten. Georgia. Where are you? The studio, yeah. you if you were to fly there, you would fly into Jacksonville, Florida. Uh oh. And it's a very, very quick twenty five minute hop right up ninety five mm -hmm. north to Kingsland, Georgia. Yes. It's a beautiful little town. We spent yes. <laughs> five years there making Star Trek continues and uh and and it's easy to get to. Mm -hmm. Lots of hotels, restaurants, wonderful little town. And I look for any opportunity Can I ask to you go a question? down there and I have a million questions. Share those sets with people. I have a million questions because, as one one will tell you, I went to film school, and uh, we, yes. you know, looked at Star Trek and Star Wars, and in in both cases, they're character driven. Star Trek more, and, and Star Trek had more of a message. Okay, let's say. But Vic, I want you, as being a Star Trek expert, to look at Raven Rider here. Oh no, Raven. What is it? Raven Rider? No, Winona. What is it there, Wani? We just we just christened her a new name. Winona. Winona Raven. Winona Raven. <laughs> okay. Would she be a evil character on Star Trek? Would she be, or would she be benign? Would she be? Well, Raven, Raven, I want you to say something so your camera comes up full screen. Okay, I'm here. Can you, can you see me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, I see Raven as the leader of a faction on an alien world okay. who, is, who is fighting who is fighting for her people's freedom. Yes, yes. That's what I see. Like an Amazon. It's crazy because you're not far off from, from where I am on a spiritual journey. That, that's exactly Vic. like... That's what's going on internally. Vic the Wop uh, hits it again. About that. Mission accomplished, Vic. Yes. Thank you, Vic. Huh. Okay. So let's go around the room. He gets me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we all get you, Raymond. But he's the star. Now you're... Okay, anyway, look. Whitey Bulger, I mean, uh, Willie Club. I'm looking at him. He's like a an evil uh, dictator of some kind of uh, other uh, planet. A Dr. That's, no kind of character. Yeah, kind of like that, yeah. In Star Trek, but he's... you know. But what about uh, the, the, the guy who was the guardian of the transporter for people to go back in time because the him? world was going to blow up? That's the kind of guy. That's the kind of guy, right? The observer, the watcher. The, the librarian. The, the librarian, librarian right? with the capital L, right. Whitey. Would you say so? Very intellectual type. Yes, yes. Well, well you have the, you have the I, one with the I books. See, you know what? I see. I see Whitey as a Starfleet Commodore retired. Retired, yeah. Brought back, brought back into who service. Has out of, who, has, who, who has come out of retirement to uh, save to Raven on a mission of great importance. <laughs> Raven's been you know, kidnapped. You've, you've hit the nail on the head. As a manager, my whole life and. The business world, you you know exactly. I think you've got some kind of I think talent you. there where you can yes. see uh, things into people like okay. you did with Raven. You, you know, you've got another uh, career coming. On, Pick the wop. Uh, <laughs> look behind the, the screen. Club, the I think you're right. His his third eye is open. Uh oh, something there. He yeah. just gets it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. Listen, wow. Vic. Now I want you to look at Juan Juan and I. Look at, third eye is not blind. Look at us. Look at us. I know. Well, I was going to say. First that. of all, I would like to say something about Switchy. Go ahead, Switchy. I was going to come to him. I would ahead. like to say that Switchy looks to me like a guy who runs a bar <laughs> on wow. uh, on a star base, <laughs> a remote star base that gets very little traffic. Okay. <laughs> and he, he runs this bar called Switchy's. Switchy's. And uh, he he was once in Starfleet. But yep. he was thrown out because of his alcoholism, oh, right? Ah, and his go. attitude. But so, so he's making he's 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 making lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> Sounds like switching and, uh, and opened a bar. Okay. On well, the, you've on, got a sixth sense. You're yeah, really, really, really on good. the worst planet ever. <laughs> okay, yeah, you run well. Yeah, he does because I'm a raging alcoholic. There you go. You can tell. <laughs> now, uh, okay, Vic. Please now, now one one. All I can say is, if if uh, Switchy is a bartender on a bad planet, what are we going to be? So I always look at one one night as Batman and Robin. Of course, I'm Batman. Are we good? Of course. Are we are we villains or are we angels? Well, you know what? If if, if we were to apply okay. classic television uh -oh. Uh, images, uh -oh. the the dark sunglasses. Uh -oh would tend to tell the audience that you're hiding something. Okay. That you don't want people to be able to look into your eyes and see your true motivation. Go ahead. You're right on the, yeah, right on the money. So, uh, so that's a villain, villainous thing. Yeah, right? so that, that you know, I, I mean, your listeners can't see the right. the, the webcams that I'm right. seeing, but, but right. you know, I'm looking at you with these, like a visor, it's so big. Right. Uh, the, these, <laughs> coal, these coal black glasses, yeah. sunglasses. yes. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think you would have to be a bad guy. A bad guy. Well, he's cross-eyed too. So he's <laughs> I was gonna say I, I didn't want people to see the red in my eyes, but okay, all right. All of a sudden, that myth is born with the sunglasses. So how about Wan Wan? Okay, and then for Wan Wan, for Wan Wan, see now if we're gonna go back to '60s Star Trek, Feel say like. something for me, Wan Wan. Let me see you up say full it. screen here. Hello, Captain. I think we have a problem in the engine room. Okay. Yeah. See, Wan Wan looks like a beatnik. <laughs> um, he's got that, he's got that goatee thing going with his little derby cap and the cool round sunglasses. He's very hip. Uh, wow. he's probably a musician of some sort. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying if we were to apply 60s standards television, okay. like what would this character be? Yes. Those would be, those visual indicators would, they would want to tell the audience that he's uh, he's some sort of a cool hip. Okay. Uh, Try to lighten up I have a problem here. here in a in a <laughs> sad, solemn uh, episode or something. Something is really dark. I try and come in and lighten it up and uh, 
ease the yes. pain. I right, listen. Yeah, ease the pain. Right? Yeah, that's what a, you would a do. Couple of one, 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 one would take us where no man has gone, gone before. <laughs> and you want, who, who wants to go? Who wants to go? That's the question. Listen, Thank let you, me Vic. ask you, Vic. Vic the Wop. Let me no, ask I you. I can get off probation so I can get back into Starfleet. <laughs> it's only three the months away, Switchy. Hey, hey, Vic, Vic. Now, Juan Juan and I are wearing the exact same thing because he stole my look exactly eight weeks ago, and he's been he's been dressing <laughs> so like he's me. A, uh, a, a why am I a villain and he's no, a good guy? We're not, wearing the exact same thing. Me. Okay, now yes, we are. A little closer. Oh man, this is. We're gonna have to cut this out, but this is bull. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's. Juan Juan had the professor. Juan Juan had the intelligent professor sun, uh, glasses going a minute ago. There you go. Um, yeah. yeah, right. Okay. I think he's searching for the lost art now. Yeah, he's. <laughs> These are the ones searching for something. Right. Okay, thank These you. These are the ones friend. I prefer to wear. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, people, Victor what? Some people think it's my uh, Harry Potter look I'm going for. Okay. There you go. Now let Harry me, I have, to, <laughs> I have to do this because I've been, someone has sent me a, a text having to do with the show. We have to go back to Switchy. Okay, Switch, this is the skew of yes. the show, meaning this is, and maybe you're right, we should put this towards the end of the show from now on. Uh, this is the most listened to part of the show. And by the way, we are number 16 in Ireland. Ireland. People in Ireland are listening to us. Number 16 in news and commentary in Ireland wow. two weeks ago. Uh, so anyway, so no more, no more Irish jokes, if you know what I mean. So um, <laughs> okay. you know, it's, it's going to be hard to do because we're all drunk. No, we're just, no. <laughs> oh, uh, switchy. Uh, this is, as I yes. said, the most listened to part of the show. So please let America, let the world know, including Ireland, what did you have for breakfast this morning? And I get a feeling it's not going to be, it's going to be average. That's just the vibe I'm getting because you combed your hair. Well, you're, you're sort of right. What I was going to have for breakfast, okay. I had for lunch. Oh, okay. So for breakfast, I had sugar frosted flakes. Okay, big bowl. Yep. I put off the actual breakfast for lunch. So two percent. No, you know this is this is uh, you get the truth from me. You don't get Go ahead. any embellishments. Hey, that's all we any, need. A, no a, judgment. Yeah. Show that isn't real. You get the unvarnished truth. Right. Sugar frosted flakes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So what'd you have for lunch then? Don't leave us hanging. I had, I had, I, I, I chopped up a potato, fried the potato, added in a couple eggs with green pepper and some shredded cheese, mm -hmm. put that up, and had a couple strips of, actually a few strips of bacon because this bacon's so thin. Wow. You need about five or six slices just to get two or three out of it. Interesting. So, okay. That's what I had. You need your bacon coffee, every day. Of course. And, and what is that, like a hobo omelet? Is that what you made? Like right. like a hobo omelet? Like a third just throw away? I, I don't know. I have, it wasn't an omelet. I don't yeah. know what the hell it was. No, I just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm okay. not exactly a, uh, what's the word? Uh, Healthy. Uh, my, my culinary skills are not uh, uh, spoken of. Really? Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. No, uh, hey, not, listen. I, I, for not, some not recognized. I know Tom or Brady wouldn't die. Not even in the shadows. Sure. Yeah. Not, Tom Brady wouldn't even you know, look it's at like me. a free for all scramble. Yeah. Now I have to ask Vic. For some oh, no. reason, Vic is the star. Vic, what? I'm going to guess what you had for breakfast this morning. Can I do that? Sure. Take a shot. Okay. Let's see. You look like just like a cup of coffee and a piece of toast type of guy. Uh, You're exactly right. Really? Really? Min oh, minus the toast. Just a cup. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. But you're Italian, so you must eat a big I'll meal. You, I'll tell you. Let me. You, I will tell you what my morning looked like. Go ahead. I, I got up early because I was having, I've been, ha I had some curtains made for my piano room. Curtains. And I, okay. I had been waiting for six weeks for this woman to make these curtains. So okay. she, she made them and finished them. And I, I had to get up early this morning to drive over and pick them up. Huh. And I had a big cup of coffee. And I even pulled into a 7 Eleven when I ran out of coffee mm. and had it refilled. Uh, for more coffee. You need coffee. And then I found that I had an In and Out Burger coupon in my wallet. I love that. So yeah. I went through In and Out Burger for yep. lunch. And oh, cool. My yeah, huh? In and Out coupon. If anyone out there has not I've had. I've never been to one of those places. Oh, uh, they're where, unbelievable. Where located, Vic? Out in well, the I'm West in Coast. Dallas. Yeah. I'm in oh, okay. Dallas. Uh, in and Out West. started out in kind of the California area, mm -hmm. but uh, but they've started branching out. Great, great burgers. Just the greatest burgers. Uh, really good people. Yeah, great, heard about it. People great run, chain. Run the uh, chain franchise. burgers. Really good. So, yeah. oh, okay. So now I got to go anyway, around. Hey, the room. listen, Mac. Yes. I, 
Mac, yes. I, I, I set aside an hour it, to, gonna, to come and hang out with you guys. We're saluting you. Yeah. I've got to run, but I, I'm so glad to Salute join em. you, and I hope I get to do it again. Victor Walk. We're, we're, glad, you, we're like, glad you came by. William Shatner let is me just me. close by, by re, Let me just close by reminding everybody, www.neutralzonestudios.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where you can go to sign mm-hmm. up for tours of the studio coming up soon. And also www.startrekcontinues.com. I'll also be doing several events coming up. I'm doing an, a one-day event in New Jersey, actually, coming up wow, in a few weeks. Yes. So uh, if uh, if anyone yes. sees that I'm going to be at an event nearby, come and say hello. Please. Okay. All right. Thank you, Vic. Okay. Vic the we'll for joining us. great to see you, Vic. Yeah. And we'll talk to you soon, okay? I wrote those down, Mac, and I'll uh, text them out to everybody. Yeah, Please yeah, do. Yeah. Thank you guys okay. so much for having right. me. I hope to join no, you thank, again. Thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Vic. Let's take nice to meet you. Have a good night. Paisan, man. Morning. He's a paisan. Paisan. Take care. Paisan. Hey, ciao, man. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Military X Files here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org. Mac Maloney's Military Star Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Well, we have quite a show for you tonight. Uh, we started off by talking about reincarnation, and uh, then we got into how uh, the original Star Trek was made and also how later versions of Star Trek were made with our good friend Victor Wap. Uh, now, I don't say that disparagingly because he's proud of his Italian heritage, and I figured I'd say that now. Uh, also with us is the very famous Juan Juan Juani. How you doing? Hello, Mac. It's a great time on the show tonight. This is awesome. I was being uh, somewhat part Good Italian. Man. Were you uh, offended when I introduced Vic the Wop? <laughs> nope, not at all. Not at all. Good. It's funny. I don't recall anybody that was ever offended in my family by that expression. Yeah. But, right. you know, I guess, uh, you know. Were you calling each other Wops you know, in your family? Sensitive. Did you? Would you normally call someone in your family? No, and we had a lot of Irish friends. We didn't call them any disparaging oh, uh, nicknames either. But how dare you? Uh, you know, it's wow. it, it was easy to do in those days. <laughs> they're too we drunk never to really hear thought you. much about it. So, a nickname is only used when you think it's okay. out of the ordinary. Dick. But okay. we had plenty of language, and plenty of language as a kid and as growing up that you didn't you didn't need that stuff. You know. Coco used to say... call somebody a jerk or an a-hole without using those other remarks. Coco was famous for saying, if you're digging a hole... (laughs) If if you're digging a hole, stop. (laughs) Never hear Coco say that? Okay. Uh, Speaking of Coco, he's not here. Sorry, middle-aged ladies. He'll be with us. He's not not here to to, uh, whip us back into shape, keep us in line, or put us on report. I don't know if whip is the word. Give us a call to the carpet. Okay. Or uh, I don't like being on the court. Uh, something or the, or the captain's mast. Something. <laughs> Ever know a captain's mast, Switchy? No, no. Now I like whipped. A, a model sailor. Yeah, really you can tell. You know why? Because I told his... you the time, didn't I, guys? Uh, can of, I introduce uh, him? Can I introduce? You know, because him? I was so close to Newport, I used to drive home <laughs> yes. every day. Yes. I had duty at Newport. Yes. Right. So, yes. Which was about it. Sometimes uh, with traffic, a, a two-hour one-way drive to Chelmsford, Massachusetts. But you could make it in an hour if you didn't run into the traffic. Right. Yes, right. I could do it in an hour and a half, hour 45. It's not and that far away. Back then, I didn't mind driving. 
driving wasn't and, anything. And your family used to say, "Wasn't but, he? Isn't he in the Navy? Why is he home every day?" Huh? Why, I mean, yeah, wasn't no. that the story? I, of course, I'd, I'd come home with my working uniform on, you know, and just drop in. Okay, See? take a shower, you know, yes, watch take, TV, take hang and, out, have dinner, and go okay. to bed. Can I introduce <laughs> everyone else? It's, it's a lot of driving just to do that in my own bed, but it was ridiculous. I was but, sleeping in my own bed, yet I was stationed. Now you have the story to tell us, so <laughs> there is some value to I it. I don't even remember. Where my rack was on the ship, I know I had a assigned rack on the ship. Of course, the ship didn't get there until like two months after I arrived. But, really? Uh, coming back from the med, it, it was wasn't late. Going anywhere after that, so right. I, ha I feel know, like I have to say uh, this: that he, Juan Juan is talking about Newport, Rhode Island. Okay, and and you have to go down there to really kind of experience it. But very, 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 very wealthy <laughs> people live down there. I mean, there's. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I that's, guess that's why there was a base there. I don't know. You know, more wealthier than <laughs> Methuen Mass. And I didn't me, even know there was a base there until I was assigned to. No it. one does. They so you hide didn't it. Know where you were to sleep on the ship. I I knew I had a yeah. I, I know I slept on the ship. Okay, there you go. a couple of times because if, if I, I thought the ship wasn't there. All right, well, ship. another show. Oh, so uh, there's no there's no cocoa tonight. Switchblade Vogue, Steve the is USS here. USS Vogue. <laughs> I don't remember the name. the name of it. Bog Bogey, really? USS Bogey after Humphrey Bogey? Yeah, I mean, I, I went out. We went out and did uh, drills every so often. 15 and, uh, minutes. Okay, we're four minutes. Narragansett at Bay, by the way. Really? Yeah. So you never went out on the pier and said, anybody seen my boat? <laughs> anybody anybody <laughs> seen my ship? <laughs> Narragansett yeah. Bay. Same name as the pier. Switch well, when I got there, I, nobody <laughs> nobody knew what it was. I went, I'm a, here's my orders, and where the hell is it? Switchy <laughs> is here. Club is here. Club. So and also the captain of the base. Yes. Tells me here's what you here's what you got to do. You got to see this chief chief petty officer down in the street here, yeah, and then he'll. Then you, you splice what, film or something. Wouldn't you, you like the film? No, you're here. just the ship's not here. That's all there is. So they put you. Then you like film. Then you like splice film together or something. Weren't you? Yeah. So okay. they. Wow. Since they didn't have really a, a, a job for me. Yes. Assigned. Yes. And I was worried about that. I said, "Oh boy, I hope they don't send me to the mess hall or something." You know. <laughs> Thank they God. Yeah, the no, okay. They called it the motion picture. Projection room. Yes. What a weird I'm name. Going, oh, I'm, I'm going to be sent to a theater. Wow, this is going to be cool. Uh, yeah. All right. And what it was is the lending library, basically, for the fleet. Mm -hmm. So when they come in to check out movies, for, you know, we, we we sign them in. There's a booklet that they sign. Yes. And after uh, so many rentals, or if there's a problem with it, we got to run it through the machines to count the splices. Yes. And redo any that wow. are loose. Wow. And we tally and record. All these Listen, splices. So can I ask you something? When we're done doing that. And, yes. Yeah. I mean, where's your flyover? I mean, I'm oh. serious. You were in the military during the, the Vietnam War, and you were splicing film for us. So listen, can I move on and just at least introduce everyone else? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. One. <laughs> no cocoa tonight. Sorry, middle-aged ladies. You might be asleep by now. Our national correspondent up there in Battle Creek, Michigan, Switchblade Steve Ward, Switch. How are you? Uh, great to be here. Okay. Good. And you know what, Juan Juan, my, my boat wasn't in when I reported either. It was coming back from the Mediterranean. Huh. So they yeah. put me on a subtender for a couple of weeks. Really? Were you splicing film? There you go. Those things happen. <laughs> we watch, yeah. Were you watching movies? movies? Well, the film does. When orders are cut, they don't always know the movements of all the fleet, I think. That's okay. what happens. Yes. Well, film measures in because the day I reported on board, they sit down a camera crew uh, to take pictures oh, that's or right. recruiting posters. And you're they don't going to hire actors or anything. You they just got the uh, rub-a-dub sailors. Yes. And uh, one of my pictures ended up in a recruiting pamphlet. And, and you've made and thousands of dollars on one of those TV commercials uh, yes. where they flash the uh, you know the pictures. I was I was standing in my dungarees yes. in front of my my sub off in the distance. Of course, the camera was low enough. Yes, you didn't see any of the masts that came up. Yes, I still got that picture somewhere. Did they take and, pictures uh, of you that you want to uh, keep uh, hidden? You know, did they make you get well, out? They, they, my only regret is I had still had my boot camp ball cap. It was the next day <laughs> okay. I got issued my very cool. USS Billfish 676 ball cap. Yes. Right? So, you know, they, they, they say, oh, that guy's dead there. He's just a boot. You 676. Know, not a, not a Let's play that number tomorrow. 676. We got to remember that. Okay. All right. Six, yes. seven, six. Uh, USS Billfish. Billfish. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what he says. Yeah, we look so dorky in boot camp. Oh, man. Right. So, anyway, let's go to our, uh, uh, and, and also joining us, our security. I bring in my yearbook. Chief. Switch. Do you have your yearbook? Willie Club. Willie, boot how you doing? Yearbook. Everything yeah, else? somewhere in the attic, I think. I have it. I still have it. Every everybody in there looked, didn't, didn't smile. I mean, it's like you're in prison. Why? So we all look like we all look like yeah. we're unhappy. All right, Willie. Oh, Willie Club. 
Introducing you now, Willie. Whitey Bulger, hey, maybe. Mac. Yeah, okay. Hi, folks. <laughs> yes, no. Hello, hello Willie. I, I feel kind of inadequate. I, I was not in the Navy. I, I was an infantryman, so Ooh. I really don't have That's uh, serious. any hmm. exciting uh, tales like you guys, but I'm oh. uh, not sure how exciting for it next time. Okay. Talk about exciting. Uh, also joining us is uh, Winona Raven. Right? Is that the name? That's it. I love that. Winona Raven. (laughs) That's that's my new name. And talk about inadequate because I don't got anything on you guys. Tell us why. (laughs) You're very fortunate. Yeah, don't make up names for us, please. I watched the other night. It was uh, Edward Scissorhands. I watched it. Did you? I love it. (laughs) Yeah. No. I don't know. I can't. There was a there was a, a spoof on that movie in the the S, the special yeah, uh, no, no, game no. that was on Sunday. Right. Yeah. 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 It wasn't fun. It was a spoof. It was, that was pretty clever. Okay, because oh, yeah. my mind immediately went to a different kind of a spoof, but we won't talk about that. No. On why? Air. No. Talk about it. now's the yeah, time to talk about, about it. What do you mean? You could talk to talk to me about it off the air. Though. No. 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 <laughs> it, it's it's crazy inappropriate. Just do it. We oh, can always edit it out. Right. Please, Raven. Let's go ahead. Do it. Let's go ahead. Okay, so if you want, um, so there was a porno, um, and it was Edward Penis Hands. Oh, whoa! Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> really? And he okay. had penises instead of you know scissors. So wow, I mean, schmeckle. That's right. a leap. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. <laughs> was he a moil? <laughs> wow. Oh, he apparently, I. That that's one I I haven't gotten around to watching yet. I'm gonna look it up. Apparently yeah. really, they were just you know well. big old penises <laughs> just flopping around. So at some knows? point I'll have to look I'm for that on X Amston. Uh, Let's see what I'm going to bing it. I'm going to bing it. Do it. I, wait, yeah, wait, let me know it. what happens. Okay, please. When you bing it. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Okay, <laughs> so listen. So we were we have a few minutes left, and and because this is weird, a loser, and we um, at least I told my weird story. And one one, you told me you had a weird story, right? That you you almost died and you didn't I do. know. And I, and Can I you found remember the, uh, the movie she's talking about? Oh. <laughs> I well, that, that took 17 about, seconds, by the way. IMDb. I love IMDb. I should have known it was on IMDb. It is, like it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to explain it to that us makes then? Sense. It's an IMDb. What's the little paragraph? You want me to read it? Yes. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. A door to door dildo saleswoman <laughs> stumbles across Edward, and upon discovering the dot 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 advantages of his hand substitutes brings him home where he falls in love with her daughter oh that's very inappropriate okay wow all i could think of is great name for a band one of the actors names is sicky nicks sicky oh wow yeah he used to play in motley crew a play on nikki six what what a name for a band the hand substitutes the hand substitutes come on wow yeah anybody ever see flesh gordon uh, oh no. my god! Yeah, really? yeah. <laughs> wow, you're yeah, laughing was, like uh, you have. Yeah, pretty interesting. I don't watch that stuff. <clears throat> wow. Oh boy. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, Edward. Thank you, Winona Ray. Yeah, thank you for Edwards. enlightening in. You guys are us. so welcome. The pleasure is all on this I'm side. Sure, of the- it is. <laughs> wow. Wait. <laughs> okay. So, so one, tell us the story about how you died and you, uh, how you almost died and you didn't know it. Okay, near death experience. Okay, I'll make it quick. How much time do I have? Uh, three I'll, minutes. I'll make it quick. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, living in uh, the city of Cambridge in a, a nice, uh, kind of a nice res- residential neighborhood. Okay. Of, uh, you know, duplexes and three story near the Republic Porter Square. of Just Cambridge. A few bus stops from Harvard Square. R- Cambridge is a, a weird place. Yeah. I'm sorry. But, uh, just trying to paint street, the picture. Uh, perpendicular to the street <laughs> I lived on. I'm just trying to paint the picture. Well, there Cambridge. was a, some industrial stuff going on down like the road, country. and one of them was a Allied Van Lines uh, storage warehouse facility. Okay. So, uh, if you're a tractor trailer operator, you have to make a sharp ninety degree turn to get down to that street. So, I had this red wagon that I used to ride myself around in. You know, these red wagons. You can carry stuff in it. You can. Sure. You can ride in it. You can ride downhill with it. You can mm-hmm. scoot along with it right. on the sidewalk. Right. Everyone so had one. Yep. That was my pride joy, my red wagon. So I had my red wagon on, on the sidewalk, and I'm just kind of diddly bopping around. And then um, I'm near the uh, intersection of the street where the Allied Van Lines places. I got out of my red wagon, and I got out. Yes. And I saw something in the yard. I was right in front of my 
my side yard. I saw something in the bushes. It looked like a, a, a baseball that I lost or something because my side yard was on a hill. Go ahead. And everything got stuck in the bushes. And I said, I got to go get that ball. So I went into the bushes and I retrieved the ball. It was, it was just a, a wiffle ball thing is what it was. Right. And I looked back to retrieve my red wagon and it had just gotten crushed by the back wheels of the cab of an Allied Van Lines uh, tractor trailer that was from out of town. It was from Texas or something. Wow. Okay? He wasn't from Cambridge. He was from, he was from out of town and didn't know that that was going to be that sharp a turn. Yes. And ran over my red wagon. I didn't even know the truck had gone by. Just, I saw it go up the street. <laughs> and your wagon was flat? It's like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> it, it was, it That's flattened awesome. my, it basically flattened. It, it would have flattened it, you. Only the wheels that survived somehow. Yeah. It would have flattened you, so, right? The axles sort of collapsed. And it would have flattened, were like this I got to say this. this. It would have flattened you if you didn't, if you didn't go for the ball. It, it would have flattened, flattened me. You. Wow. I mean. No one one. You know. It, what would the world be like? I'm thinking, well, I probably would have heard the tractor if it was that close. I would have been a run for cover or something. Run but for cover. It was yes. just a matter of moments. I turned around to get my wagon and... Yeah, someone ran know, over it. I didn't wow. see it roll over it, but mm -hmm. I saw the tractor trailer, maybe the tractor about, you know, 100 might, feet away from the tractor. That might explain so a lot. you fixed your wagon. You fixed all one. Yeah. So it just affects my wagon. That's right. I, you know, I didn't take his plate number or anything. Oh, good for you. Just, yes. It was like... Ma, you, guess what you happened? You couldn't chase him in your wagon. That's what <laughs> okay. So that's and, he, he drags home the wagon. It's flattened. He that, goes, hey, Ma, guess what happened? <laughs> right? Ma, and she what, bought the story. what happened. Good for her. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> so look it. Yeah, believe it or not, we're really at the end of the show. What's weird is that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm surprised there hadn't been more accidents at that corner because not too far away from that was a tree. Yes. And I was, you know, how many a tree. tractors had a kind of Kind of close so they didn't hit the tree. You know how Raven feels it's about kind of trees. A weird, uh, weird intersection. Uh, Switchy, it's time to put the train wreck image up, okay? Because we're coming to the end of the show, as it turns out. Okay, there we go. So, what a show, right? It was Weird Palooza. It wasn't the Weird Palooza wow. we thought it was going to be, but it was weird. It was mystical and magical. It was all funny. The way around. Right, right. And had to do with someone who had penises instead of fingers, right? I was going to say, I never expected uh, penises to come up uh, during the we'll show. We'll put that in the bumper, have people try to Listen, figure it out. Anything is possible when that's, you got me. Hey, hey, that's hey. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Prayers are answered <laughs> if you pray hard enough. I so, would have never known about that movie, really. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you had it down in seven seconds. I thought, it was, timed you. I thought it was a joke. I thought it was a bit. Right. <laughs> she was right. No? <laughs> Uh, I, I, can I close no, the show? I can't swear. Okay. <laughs> say it. Hey, if you're going to say it, now's the time to say it. Please, Raven. Okay. When over. I, my, my, I ain't shitting you. Okay. Oh. It's real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we agree. It's on YouTube also. Yeah, it's, on, you, it's, on, YouTube. it's on YouTube. <laughs> Edward Penis yeah, Hands is. is on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, this is bad. No, this is not the good. Caveat, the cav no, the caveat is on YouTube, porn, pornless scenes, uh, quote unquote, non penetrational scenes. <laughs> oh, well, this. <laughs> All right. There's so the name of your first CD. Up for YouTube. The hand substitutes, yeah, non penetrational. Non penetrational. Right. Says, yeah. Quotes. So They're it books. doesn't violate the penal code. Then. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Switch. That'd be the quote. Okay. Oh God! Wow, what a what a what a moment to close on. So let me do the let me this, do the plug. This is another show that my family can't listen to. <laughs> yes, I'm sure the sponsors are the people who are plugging are going to be glad to hear this. Show. I'll never look at my fingers the yeah, same way. Either. Either. <laughs> my hands are in my pockets. <laughs> wow! You know, okay. Say, let your fingers do the talking. I know? do have fun. Or do the walking. Okay. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> All right. All right. We got to do the got to do the plugs. <laughs> Gonna be tough. Let's get to the yeah. let's get to the plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Homes for our troops, nonprofit organization, builds houses from foundation to the roof. I think we might have lost our fearless leader here for a minute. <laughs> and then they we'll have to vamp a bit. They're giving looking for his veterans of the uh, Iraqi <laughs> wars. Right. 
they build homes for uh, veterans, right? Uh, one was right of the uh, Iraqi and uh, Afghani wars. In Afghani wars, right? Homes for our troops. They give eighty-eight cents for every dollar you donate uh, to their cause, and that's very high for any kind of a charity. And uh, sure, just yeah. Google them. You know, they've done like you know way over three hundred homes, and they just build these homes so these guys who, you know, they're in wheelchairs and stuff. You know, so they model the home so they can get around easily, and then they just mm-hmm. give them the keys. No mortgage. They deserve it. Homes for our troops. Okay, just Google them. Also, um, Ross Shop, who's going to be joining us in a couple of weeks. Ross Shop, uh, Matt Englishman. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, and his Matt Englishman friends are putting back together a mosquito war plane from World War II. All wood plane, put Rolls Royce engines on it. Fastest thing in the skies for about a year and a half. They didn't even put guns on some of them because they could outrun the bullets. That's amazing. Yeah, another good name for CD. Outrunning the bullets. Hey, yeah. Let's start a rap group. And that'll be the name of our CD. Okay? Outrunning the bullets. Outrunning the bullets. Let's do it. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So, uh, and that's the play. Oh, we're on uh, we're on uh, Seacoast Oldies. We have to do a promo just for that. Seacoast Oldies is a radio yes. uh, network uh, near where we broadcast the show from. Exeter, New Hampshire. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, Northern Massachusetts, and we are on uh, their uh, podcast right app. Right into Maine. Mm-hmm. Right, right into Maine, and people can listen to us right on the radio. Okay? So, uh, see Coast Oldies, download their app for podcasts. Is that right, Bonnie? That's right, right? Yep. Okay. Apple Podcasts. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what they call themselves now. Not, yeah. They don't really call themselves Apple iTunes. Is that right? Apple yeah. Podcasts. Yeah. Yep. We're everywhere. I mean, uh, all you have Apple to do is Play. Google us. I mean, that was when we took- Spotify, Stitcher. Podbean, anywhere you uh, get your podcast, we're there. Just Google us. All right. Google Mac Maloney's Military X Files. You'll get about 17 hits <clears throat> on where our show can be heard. And I've tried them all, and then they're all working. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, yeah. Which is, right. uh, um, we get some that's very. part of my job is to make sure that when you get on these places, you can actually find the show. Wow. Okay. Good for you, Wani. <laughs> right. Have you been thing. doing that behind the scenes, behind our back, all this okay. stuff? I try to, yeah. Okay. Right, I you. download the apps myself, make sure they're. Uh, Really? Functioning. Okay. You can really get the show without a, without a lot of difficulty. Oh, did you download the X Hamster app? <laughs> oh, his laugh says yes. Do they have their own app? <laughs> they have their own they app. Sure they do. Okay, well, listen, let me uh, thank everybody. Thank Coco for not joining us tonight. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. Thank you. I mean, thank you, Coco, for joining us, except for tonight. Um, also, he would have called us all to the carpet. See, I, I thought he would call us tonight, but he's not. He's very into his secret missions these no, days. He's going to call us on the carpet. Oh, right, yeah. He's going to hear right. the show, and he's going to put, yeah. put us all in report. Mm. And we're going to be uh, two weeks restricted to base. Really, yeah. have been restricted to base, which is... <laughs> For me, no. Well, I was... I was dink on my qualls. Okay, we got six. Well, oh, no. Uh, we got, and, you, know, you know what that means. Yeah, six but nobody else does. So uh, we I don't want to know. You know. I had to study. <laughs> right, dink. Yeah, yeah. Did you say dink, D-I-N-K? That's not bad. Yeah, okay. At least that doesn't show up in your record. Dink, yep, dink, dink. for okay. delinquent. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. TMI. Yeah. So anyway, it wasn't, what, <laughs> it wasn't like what Raven was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, meow. <laughs> between Switchy and Raven. Interesting. Interesting dynamic there between these two. So listen, so Switchy, thank you for joining us in club also for classing up the show and having the books oh, behind it was fun you. again. Yeah, good, good. Okay. And I can see you're a glow because uh, TB12 came through, okay? He he did something magical without he mentioning sure the uh, game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's, he's a winner. For him. Yeah, he's a winner. Yeah, it's been, it was all him. I, you know, I don't want to say I hate to admit it, but now the proof is in the pudding. You know what? You know what? The, yeah, a lot of it was him. It was yeah, it was behind the success. Him. It was mostly just, him. Yeah, as it turns out. You know, okay. He managed the game. He did. I've thanked all the beasts, and I'm going to thank the beauty. Hang on. The score thank made him. it look close. This is one of going to talk over. It was. It was like a hundred to hundred to nine, basically, is what it looked like to me. Winona Raven, thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, we appreciate it. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yes. Thanks for... Uh, for sure. I was going to say th- thanks for having us, but they just didn't sound right. <laughs> no, <I listen. laughs> no, so you thank you to everyone out there. So that, yeah. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. And we say we'll have you anytime. No, no. Well, that is the name of a song. <laughs> and yes. It is. Yeah, okay. it is. It's Bob Dylan song, I believe. <laughs> Switchy's giving me the uh, gun, the, the gun to the head. I think co-written signal, by yeah. uh, George Harrison. Really? Yeah. 
of the show. Uh, so uh, thank you for everyone listening to us. And, uh, you know, until you hear us next time, this is Mac and the entire gang saying, be safe, be happy, and bye-bye. <laughs>